Welcome to episode one of the One Shot Wonders in early winter. I am Aaron, Dungeon Master of the One Shot Wonders. Let's introduce you to the rest of the crew for this episode. Hi, I'm Chuck, and I'll be playing B1RD, an Aormaton Warlock. Hi, I'm Bo. Uh, I'll be playing a Warforged Twilight Domain Cleric. Hello all, my name is Sam. I'll be playing Krom Stonefist, a Mountain Dwarf Barbarian of the Wild Magic variety. Hey guys, my name is Manny. I'm going to be playing a uh, Kobold Artificer uh, named Red Shriek Sharp Pencil. Greetings, everyone. Dungeon Master Aaron here, and I want to thank you for tuning in to Episode 1 of the One-Shot Wonders, the actual play show that is full of action, adventure, and everything you love about Dungeons & Dragons with safe language for families. This episode has depictions of fantasy combat and death. There is one scene with a depiction of cruelty to animals, so if you want to skip that part, just skip ahead one minute when you hear the wind pick up in the background at about the one and a half hour mark. Now, sit back and enjoy as I add four new souls to the City of Judgment. We are set in the Elter Guard region of the Sword Coast. Uh, there's a map there on the bottom of the screen for those of you watching. Uh, this is a little bit to the east of Baldur's Gate up the river. Uh, if you're familiar with uh, the storyline up to this point, the city of El Terrell about a year ago was uh, sundered from this plane and sent to the first level of uh, Avernus. Uh, when that city left, uh, the power in the area uh, dissipated and the surrounding area is trying to figure out um, safety, uh, trade, and just the various things that go when a power vacuum is left. And so that is the area we are exploring here. So we are going to start here in the town of Triel for our first adventure. All of our adventurers have answered a call from the mayor of Triel asking for a group of people to figure out what's going on with some cattle mutilations uh, that, that farmers are dealing with in the area. So we are going to start after everyone is already there. So it is a crisp autumn morning. It greets you in the small town of Triel, the small gated settlement in the fields of the dead. The sun is just beginning to rise as you smell the aroma of cooking bacon and sausage coming from the main level of the inn. You all spent the evening in the singing wind, the only lodging in the small village. The gates were closed and locked at dusk, and there was not much to do the evening before except sleep. You come downstairs as the tavern keep places a plate of bacon on the table among plates of sausage, a basket of bread, and some apples. A plump human female in her mid-fifties, with coarse skin and an eye patch over her left eye, turns back towards the kitchen and says over her shoulder, Breakfast is included with your commission, so eat up, and then get over to the meeting hall. I'm not sure what your mechanical fellas eat, but uh, take what you need. And without missing a beat, she disappears behind the bar. You all come down the stairs near the same time to the small gathering room. Looking at each other's gear, it's clear you're all here responding to the same request. So please describe yourselves. First down the uh, stairs is Krom. Okay, as Krom walks down, you can see that he is a stout, um, like four to five foot tall dwarf. He has a very bushy braided um burgundy red beard with a giant plume of red hair fashioned in a mohawk on his head um he's covered in um kind of like a battle girdle and gauntlets with fur boots and kind of like a cowl around his shoulders and around his eyes and over his body he has kind of like war paint markings but a closer look it doesn't seem to be paint it seems to be part of his skin like a birthmark now on both of his palms he has these um dwarven runes that are of similar style and color to the um to the paint to the markings he has on his body already um on his left hand it says wild and on the right hand it says magic in dwarf in the dwarven nomenclature um, on his back, then, he has this giant studded maul, and yeah, and then he has a few hand axes at his side, and 
that that is Krom. All right, shortly down the stairs afterwards of much smaller stature, uh, Red Streak. So as Red Streak comes down the stairs, uh, he's wearing regular, like, poor, like, not very fancy clothes, just regular clothes. Uh, comes down the stairs and behind him, his steel defender that looks like a kobold wearing the same type of clothes comes down him uh, the stairs and uh, he doesn't look that uh, that important or that flashy. Um, just a big uh, hand axe at the side. Well, big to him because uh, he's small. And uh, the steel defender walks behind him just watching, making sure that there's no dangers around. Um, just looks like a regular kobold, but uh, it's very wary of his surroundings. Okay. Uh, after that, the large clunking starts coming down the stairs. B1RD. Hello. I'm B1RD. B1RD is very large, over six foot four, wearing flowing warlock robes of a deep purple, which accent his copper shell. He doesn't have normal human features, more of a blankness to his face, but just a general impression of a nose or, or a mouth. And it looks like he's wearing goggles with glowing red lenses. Very good. And then finally, a final set of large metal uh, starts coming down the stairs. Birdhouse. Clunking down the stairs after uh, the three of you is a large metonic or metallic-like creature uh, with some wooden bits mixed in where from a war long ago, uh, this being seemed to be banged up. Uh, Protruding out of his right arm is just kind of a wooden stump from where a hand used to be as... He still makes it work, but he doesn't seem to have the hand anymore as it no longer bothers him. Uh, the plim wood that he seems to be adorning on his skin is kind of, it's faint, uh, it's kind of rotting. And uh, the wood seems to be, or the metal on him seems to be rusted. He doesn't seem to be wearing much clothes. Uh, the people that brought him back kind of put a garment over uh, the front of him as a loincloth to cover him. Just so that the locals would not get... Uh, worried about what he is wearing, but yes, that is Birdhouse. So as the four of you stand there kind of staring at each other, uh, Red Streak and Crom kind of looking at these mechanical creatures uh, ahead of you, as you're sitting there eating at the table, the uh, innkeep comes back and she says, Well, seems you've all been acquainted. Eat your bread, eat your apples, bacon and sausage, it's all here. I've got some bananas, they're quite appealing if you uh, get my meaning. But let me know what you want. No? All right, then. What do, What do you mean by appealing? <sighs> I take it you are not very fond of human jokes. No. Very well. Well, I believe the mayor has scheduled a meeting with you early in the morning. The building's right out the front door to the right at the meeting hall. So fill up, and then I suggest you get on over there. He's uh, been in quite a huff these last few days. Crom is just ninety percent, or like ninety-five percent, is just all bacon and sausage with a little bit of bread, and he's just chowing down. What's what's Red Streak doing? Uh, Red Streak is uh, just looking at the food he was given. He's eating it. He's not really too uh, picky about what uh, he's been given. Uh, but he looks over at the other mechanical beings, and uh, he says, "You know." I could make improvements upon you guys. Uh, do you see my friend here? Well, my my companion. Uh, I have given him intelligence, and he walks as if he's alive. So I don't know what power you guys have inside you, but perhaps I could, uh, with my expertise, make you guys a little bit better. In my I appreciate opinion. your input, friend, but as you can see, I am perfection. Birdhouse stands there just saying nothing. He seems to not understand. Crawl we should get on with our task, gentlemen. If I'm going to continue my investigation into the local ruins, I definitely need to increase my currency. 
Krom stops in the middle of trying to give um, this weird automaton kobold a sausage and eats it himself and then gets ready to go. I agree with him. We should get going. All right, so you grab all your things after you've had a nice uh, full breakfast and you step outside immediately into a small central square. Four buildings surround the square. Uh, the inn that you're currently in, across the way you see what looks to be a blacksmith shop. Um, off to the left, what appears to be some kind of small temple and what is likely the meeting hall off to the right. Uh, behind these are several residences and some small businesses totaling about 30 buildings all surrounded by a stone wall. As you gather outside, you feel the cool air chill your skin, giving you goosebumps as a light breeze blows from the northwest, bringing the smell of fallen leaves, mixing with the remnants of the bacon and sausage that had just been cooked. Glancing over to the meeting hall, you see a middle-aged human male with a pot belly wave his hand and beckon you inside just before he hurries in. Birdhouse is going to just follow the crowd. Yep. Or follow where he was beckoned to go. Mm -hmm. Alright, so everyone heads to the meeting hall? Yeah. Alright. Yes. You step inside a small meeting hall. Uh, just a one-room building with a table in the center, and you see a uh, the same middle-aged human male. Um, it's just him. He appears to be clean-shaven, uh, overweight, and he's got bags under his eyes and looks a little uh, a little rushed. He says, "Ah, gentlemen, you must be the ones I called for. I guess uh, is gentlemen the correct term for you two?" It will survive. Not sure. Very well. We'll go with it. Let me know if I need to change anything. Uh, so, you're here about the cattle mutilation uh, request I put out, yes? I guess we are. Can you tell us a little bit more about the situation? Well, it started maybe about a week ago. We had the first report of something destroying uh, one of the uh, nearby ranchers' uh, livestock. And then a few days later there was some livestock that went completely missing. And over about once a day, always happening at night, uh, the farmers find some of their livestock have either gone missing or have been mutilated. Uh, just two days ago uh, was the last mutilation we had. We didn't have any report yesterday, so I assume that means that someone, something or someone has gone missing. I don't see why anything would have changed. But we are a small town here. Ever since El Terrell left, we... So, uh, we survive only on our imports. Uh, the winter is coming, and if we do not have our livestock for milk and meat uh, to go along with the ever dwindling supply of imports due to the dangers on the roads, I'm afraid I will not be able to feed the people of this town. So it is of dire importance we find out what is killing or stealing uh, the livestock. Now, the only clue we've been able to ascertain is some of the shepherds that have been watching out um, in the dusk hours have seen some kind of flying creature. Uh, it seems to be flying off to the west. And the only thing of note to the west through the fields of the dead is the lonely mount about a half a day's walk from uh, the town. Uh, I guess the... The, the biggest problem we've had before is uh, every now and then some hippogriffs or some manticores that would uh, live in those mountains uh, would come out and hunt, but it, they're not really known to hunt things as large as cattle, so we're not quite sure what's going on, but uh, that could be what we're looking at. Um, whenever you're ready, or if you have any other questions uh, before you head out, I can take you to the, uh, the scene of the last mutilation. Point me um, in the way. I have no more questions. As he finishes his uh, his his uh, speech to us about what's going on, during that time, Red Streak was uh, with the measuring device, taking measurements of uh, B1RD and Birdhouse, and writing down notes, and uh, looking over at at his uh, steel defender, and writing down some more notes. And he looks at the mayor and he says, "Okay, well." What's in it for the rest of us, then, once we take care of this problem? That is a fair question. Um, 
I have been authorized by the villagers of uh, Triel and the farmers to offer a sum of 800 gold uh, to whoever solves this. So if the four of you come back, we can split that evenly between uh, 200 each of you. Unless you consider yourselves a group and then I can give it to your leader, but uh, I will leave that up to you. 200 gold is sufficient. Very yes, well. I've served in war before. I, I do not need points another Points in the way of the fight. Very well. All we ask is that you bring back proof of whatever uh, has been killing our cattle. And uh, so I recommend you don't... Uh, I see some of you have some magical abilities. I recommend maybe not disintegrating everything, but a tooth, an eye, a skull, anything uh, would be great to bring back on uh, on what's been going on. And if it's something of the humanoid variety um i can increase that price uh to 300 gold each um if the person is brought back to stand trial sound fair yes Sounds gold has me. no value to me but the rest of these seem to want some we'll it seems birdhouse will share his fair share with me we'll take so. a share if you all come back then i'll distribute it and you can do with it as you see fit Sounds I like already called it. All right. Any other questions before we go? Lead the way. Very well. Uh, you take a short walk outside the town. You go through the about a six foot tall uh, stone uh, outer perimeter of this town, and then walk into uh, these fields. There's a singular road uh, that heads from uh, the north and south out of the town. Uh, you take a quick right as you go out the south gate and start heading towards the lonely mountain off in the distance. A short walk of about 30 minutes through various crops. And as you look, these crops don't look very healthy. It is a hard life here for these villagers. Uh, it's coming near the end of the season. Uh, the corn that you see should be eight, nine feet tall with lots of ears. They're maybe four to five feet tall. Some of the other plants that you see are uh, real small, different types of vegetables that are growing. Uh, so the land here is not very forgiving on these people. So you can definitely see how uh, the loss of some cattle um, is going to cause a hard winter here. But as you journey, you walk for about 30 minutes through these pitiful looking uh, fields uh, and you reach the edge of some grazing land. Uh, you see a small fence has been erected and Mayor Holloway leads you uh, to the remains of two large cattle. Um, there's a little bit of meat uh, that is still remaining and attached to the bones, um, and it's beginning to turn. Uh, this is uh, the last latest report we've had, if you want to take a look. Mm, yes, can I take a look at that? What do you want to look for? Uh, I'd like to look at the gashes, see if uh, the talons or the cuts, kind of give it an autopsy, just a visual autopsy, to see what sort of creature we know we're dealing with. Okay, um, give me a nature as, check. Um, as I see, wait, before you roll that, as I see um, him about to go into it, I go up to Birdhouse and I lay one of my palms on him, and this surge of magic goes through his body, leaving similar tattoo marks on his body that glow a bright blue and then fade into his body as I bolster him with magic. For 10 minutes, you can add a d3 to any ability check or attack roll. You roll. Oh, well, I don't You're think gonna you're need it. help there. <laughs> but you get that for 10 minutes, so... Alright, so you take a look at this body and it looks like it's been eaten by animals. Other than that... Uh, you're just not quite sure. Yeah, maybe it's a creature that is not natural from where you come from or something you haven't encountered yet, but, uh, you, you're a little stumped. Yes, it appears to be dead. <laughs> Great my, observation. No one else um, would have come down to that. My, um, tattoos and, like, war paint body marks also glow a little bit more vibrant blue and then fade back to their normal as they do the same with myself for 10 minutes. Okay. And I search, um, I search the area for any tracks of, um, yeah, any, like, any tracks or, like, maybe direction it might have flown or crawled off to, maybe a feather, maybe some, like, rustled trees. Okay, give me a survival check. Give me a direction. 
got it. All right, a 21. So you look around and you take a look at the body and you realize, you, you're you able to look and see there are some bite marks here of at least a large creature. So this wasn't like mice or anything that came in and ate. So you start to look around for large tracks. You find absolutely nothing except maybe some disturbed area right around the body. Give me an insight check. Okay. That was also a 23. I forgot to add the, um, okay. the T3. Um, Can I possibly help him with that? Are you trained? Yes, I am. Then yes. So you can okay. roll with advantage. Are we also using some of the rules we use in our other account? Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, specifically which? Oh, what like, we just well, did. well, what we just did, but I was also going to be thinking of... Um... Oh, we'll get there when we get there. Yeah. So for, <laughs> oh, so for that one, if you want to help... Um, you got to be trained in whatever it is you're trying to help. I'll use okay, my thing. Yeah. Uh, I'll use my I'll use my catchphrase in our other campaign. Okay. DM question. Yeah. So I'm gonna roll with advantage and then add the D3. Okay. Oh, oh my goodness. A one and a two. Hey man, we're getting them out of the way now. Four. All right. So you you look around and you're like, there are no tracks around here. The only possible explanation is that whatever came here either came from the ethereal realm and left nothing, or came up from under the ground and ate it and left back through underground. There is no other possible explanation. Whatever ate this is something big, something dangerous, and something that does not leave trail. It'll be a... Hey, it'll be a hard-fought battle indeed. Red Streak or B1RD, do you want to do anything? Perhaps I should investigate. Well, what do you I want? I believe there are other options based on my experience. Okay, what are you looking for? The investigating the sea, the, the mayor mentioned flight. Okay. So perhaps this was an animal that flies. And I'm not even going to make you roll for that. Uh, when you hear that, Krom, you're like, oh, yeah, that's another option, too. <laughs> he just nods and he just nods in agreement, like, yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The Red Streak, anything else you want to add to that? No, Red Streak just observing. All righty. Then, what would you guys like to do? The mayor turns to you. Well, we what, did, what, have you, what have you figured out? Nothing. <laughs> that it flies. It flies away. It's big. It's going to be a worthy opponent and adversary. But, yeah, that's about it. All right, the mayor says something about a nearby mountain. Uh, yeah, you look off and you can see about a half day's drive. There's just a singular peak. Uh, sticking up out of the fields. You don't know if it was uh, a singular volcano at one time or just something magical had put it there, but there's just uh, one little peak. It's about the only thing you can see uh, in the area that's it's very prominent. You three wouldn't uh, assume that a giant flying beast would make its nest up in that mountain over there. I would assume it's logical. Breathing. breathing creatures are quite interesting. I'm still learning about a lot of you. Aye, it's our best bet. Before we go any further, though, we should probably learn how to work as a team and a singular unit. You, What types of weaknesses and strengths do you bring to the table in case we were to get into a scrap? Well, or should I say when? In my times of war, I seem to be quite a vicious creature, but... When I was brought back, they decommissioned me, and whoever reprogrammed me made it so that these hands are now made for helping, for mending. And it seems that I can be of more service healing than, than hurting. Aye, useful, useful. What about you, small red streak? I believe your name was. What, what can you do when your little friend there, does he, does he eat? He does not eat. He does, does he need drink? to eat. He does not need to drink. Then what He's just my he? servant. Mm. 
He only follows my commands. Uh, but if you wish to see some of my expertise, he uh, unhooks his uh, battle axe from like his hip, and he chucks it super far, and he holds out his hand, and it comes back to him, and he puts it back in his hip. See, that is just a fraction of my power and my intelligence. If you two, looking at Birdhouse and B1RD, want some of this, this is what I was talking about. Aye, that is very, that is very nice. I can do that sometimes myself as well with my hammer. But I look forward to seeing what you can do. And what about you, my friend, B1RD? I think. I'm an archaeologist. I'm well versed in history, especially of this region. But if the need arises, I have a laser I can shoot out of my hand that's a, a burst of energy to, to blast my enemies. And if needs be, I can fly, so a flying creature won't get away. Good to know, good to know. And are these abilities of magical properties? I have. But it's all magical. What my creator referred to it as jet engines in my feet. Jet engines. What language is that? It's ancient. You wouldn't you wouldn't know it. Interesting. And what of you, Crown? Me myself, I'm a bit of a wild card per se, but everything I do can be very rewarding to myself and damaging to my enemies and potentially those around me when i get into the fighting spirit i can definitely lash out in some type of magical ability i'm still kind of learning it myself but it definitely makes for a good show that's for sure especially for the fighting pits the mayor then is listening to this conversation and says well it seems like we've hired the right group so uh, be off, and uh, we look forward to hearing uh, of your success. I will be waiting at the meeting hall for you. Aye, we look forward to seeing you there. Have the drinks on you. <laughs> and uh, yes, please have some oil waiting. On the journey over to the mountain, uh, there are wolves in the area, so just be prepared. More All right. stats in the collection. Thank you for the warning. Mm -hmm. You guys head out. Oh yeah, heading towards the lonely mountain. All right, so you head towards the mountain. Your journey to the lonely mountain in the distance to the west takes you through an open field of tall grasses. This area is known as the Fields of the Dead, called such for its history of combat and battles in centuries past. Scattered among your journey, you pass by rock cairns stacked to honor the fallen. After two hours, you have lost count of how many cairns you have passed. Ancient bones and rusty armor litter the area as you walk, and upturned dirt appears to indicate the presence of treasure hunters or grave robbers active in the area. As you journey across this uh, field, uh, what is your marching order, or how are you uh, moving? I can go first. Uh, I can go behind. I, yeah. I have a keen eye for things that are around us. Crumb will bring up the rear. I also, I love, like, it's called the Lonely Mountain, and you're not capitalizing on some, like, Hobbit <laughs> content here, but I get it. <laughs> All I'm thinking about is Erebor, and I'm like, I'm playing a dwarf, so it's kind of, it kind of fits. <laughs> but, um, Crom will, Crom will take up the rear just to, like, kind of, like, watch everybody and kind of, like, be around in the surroundings. All right. So, as you are walking, um... Are you doing it stealthily? Who's looking out for things? Um, who's uh, I can look out for things. Checking the route, th that. So let me know. I will help. I will aid on um, Birdhouse. Yeah, I'll just make sure we're following the path correctly. Make sure there's not any enemies up ahead. Okay, I'll, so go ahead and give I'll, me perception then. With advantage, I'll help you out with that. Okay, then add your D. Are you in the D three or just an advantage? T depends on how long it's been. It lasts for ten minutes, so I'll leave that up to it's you. Been longer. It's been longer. Yeah, it's been a couple hours. That, yeah, that's <laughs> what I thought. Journey. Okay, it's nice. All right, so you rolled a twenty-three. I, yeah, I rolled a twenty-three. Yep. All right, I'm gonna. These numbers are all going to be based upon each other. So, what else are you doing? Are you? How are you walking normally or stealthily? Um, 
I'd say not exactly as stealthy as right. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be, I feel like it's a, it, we're alert. That's what we're looking out for. Okay. Um, stealth isn't exactly my yeah. strong suit. I'm. <laughs> yeah, we're kind of like big clunky machines and a clunky dwarf. Okay, then. So someone... de definitely just walking regularly for sure towards the mountain. Then for uh, just traversing over the open fields and through the different uh, parts of the field, give me a survival check. Uh, we'll do it as a group survival check. Sounds good. These rolls got improved. Eight, seven, three. Yeah, I got a Ooh. seven. What kind of modules do you have on here? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. B1RD. B1 RD. Let's break the. Let's break ten. B1RD. B1R... Are you surviving? There we go. Ooh. <laughs> None of us are. Two sevens, an eight, and a three. All right. Yikes. So you are really good at looking at your surroundings but not interpreting what it means. <laughs> so so you see lots of the cairns, the rocks of the fallen. You see the, the broken armor and swords, and you see the, the upturned dirt uh, that's around. And you're kind of alert for other people because it, it looks like there's been a lot of digging going on in this area. And so you don't know if it's grave robbers or what, or archaeologists. Um, so you're keeping an eye out. And as you're looking out, you do occasionally red streak off in the distance or, or out of the corner of your eye, you, you catch a, a flash of gray. And you th think you might, th there's something there, and it's some kind of animal that appears to be tracking along with you guys as you're moving it and it kind of moves through the grass and occasionally gets too close that you catch a glimpse but then when you look it's gone and so as you continue walking through the field uh you uh come up to a part where there's a large rock and the grasses kind of get a lot shorter and the uh so we have red streak in front and then who was who's taking up the rear Crom. Crom? Yeah. Okay, and then was it Birdhouse or BR, B1RD after that? I'd say Birdhouse would be in front of Crom. Okay. And then Red Streak, where is Gray Streak? Uh, right uh, behind me. Okay. All right, so as you uh, come out into this shorter grassed area, there's a few scraggly trees that have grown, and you kind of come through a little rock area. And as you break the vision on the rock area... Uh, you see immediately ahead of you two enormous wolves that have positioned themselves and are ready to pounce and attack. So, I'm going to bring you to our first map here. And you see two dire wolves. Everybody, roll me some initiative. It's finally... It never helps to have advantage on initiative. Never go first. Trust me, neither do I, man. <laughs> Alright. There we go. Uh, we are missing B1RD. Um, Red Streak, does Gray Streak get his own initiative or does he go after you? He goes right after me, okay. um, but he doesn't have his own action. He can only take the dodge action unless I use a bonus action to do, uh, or tell him to do something. Okay. Okay. All right. Right, Sam? You got it. Uh, B1RD, do you enemy. need me to roll your initiative or? Please, it won't roll from my sheet. Okay. Uh, looks like you rolled a nine. Ten the first time. 10 the first time. I'll give you the 10. Looks like you guys are going to need it. All right. So for those of you that are listening and don't see the combat tracker, uh, Birdhouse has got a 17, Red Streak's a 15, uh, B1RD's a 10, and Krom received a 9. So one of the Dire Wolves gets the first attack, and it is going to just rush right up here. 
to Red Streak. And it is going to try and bite you. It's going to become very apparent that I don't roll well with initiative. <laughs> All right, a 22. I assume that hits your AC? That hits. All right, so you're going to take nine piercing damage. And I need you to make a strength saving throw. All right, you make it as the, the bite and the paws go up on your chest and attempt to knock you over. But your small stature, he didn't get quite enough leverage, and you're able to stay standing up, and you shove the paws back as this giant wolf, four times your size, snarls at you. That is going to bring us to Birdhouse. All right, Birdhouse, uh, watching as these dire wolves just ran down here. And seeing this one come up right here, he is going to step out about 20 feet. And on this one, he is going to cast Sacred Flame. Alright, so deck saving throw, uh, DC 15. The wolf gets a 7. Alright, so he fails. Okay. He takes 12 damage. 12 radiant damage. That's and that will be my thing. turn. Alright, so... You you tell tell me how this attack goes. What's it look like? All right, as Birdhouse runs 15 feet to the right, you see this stub of a wooden arm that he has come up as flames immerse up out of the ground and protrude as this wolf just yips as it takes a little bit of damage. All righty. Red Streak, you've got a giant wolf bearing down on you that just yips like a little pup. A Red Streak, uh... Takes the the battle the the hand axe from his hip, and uh, he yells that, "Away from me, beast!" and attempts to slash him with the with the hand axe. Okay. All right. I'm gonna go for that right there. Fourteen. You reach out, and it looks like you're gonna miss, but the wolf in its retracting had pulled its paw up, and you slash right on its wrist for one whole damage. And uh, as my bonus action, I'm going to have a uh, gray streak come up next to me. And uh, he's going to, I'm going to tell him, gray streak, assist. And he walks up. He says, yes, master. And he holds up to his hand and he uses his force empowered rend as uh, energy comes out from his fist towards the wolf. And just like that, as the, the wolf pulls its paw back, uh, he takes uh, your Gray Streak takes his uh, little fist and punches right in the same spot, just digging right in. For nine damage, so 14 hit there. Okay. Oh, Manny, you have extra attack, just so you know. Oh, I do. That's great. Yep. Thank you. Got it, dude. So he's going to uh, hit with the hit with the hand axe again. And this is Red Streak, right? Yes. Okay. Red Streak's going to use the hand axe again okay. to try to slash at the wolf. All right, this time the the wolf gets the, the message and just pulls its paw back, and you miss as you come across with a second strike. It's a fearsome creature. Be alert. That's my turn. All right. All right, bounding over from the side here, and this dire wolf is going to gang up on you, Red Streak. And... With pack tactics, it is now going to do a bite with advantage. Ouch. So, ooh, a natural 19 for a 24. So 12 piercing damage and make a strength save. Ah! <laughs> with a 4, you are knocked prone. And so you are down on the ground. As you, the rest of you see these wolves come in on this perfectly concentrated attack, the dire wolf comes off from the side and his paw, giant paw is almost taking up the entire chest of Red Streak as he is down on the ground. Robots, assist! Robots! It is B1RD's turn. The injured wolf. We're going to fire upon it with Cult the Dead. Okay. Okay, so DC 14 wisdom save. Yeah. Alrighty. Maybe I'll, I'll see if I can get the different one. Okay. Uh, he, it's a 12, so that is a miss. 
So that is going to be... Five necrotic damage. Five necrotic damage. Got it. Uh, describe what had just happened for me. B1RD raised his hand and fired a green beam out of his hand that engulfed the wolf. And the, the force from the beam caused the flesh to start to decay and wither. All righty. And that goes right over Red Streak's nose as you've got this giant paw on you. You see this streak of magic fly right over your head, barely missing you. Anything else, B1RD? We're going to change location. Okay. Uh, second thought. We're going to recalculate and stay here. Okay. <laughs> All right. Crom Stone Fist. Crom seeing this, he's going to be like, finally a fight. And he is going to rush up on this wolf that's attacking his, his dude. His 20, dude. 25. 30. I'll get, right, I'll get right behind him so I'm flanking with Red Streak. Okay. And then he just shouts in Dwarven, Dupaka! As he rages. Alrighty. So as he rages, I rolled a two. Some fancy stuff happens. Excellent. As as he ranges, you see the mark, the war paint markings, and his hair turn a vibrant orange color to match with what he is doing. He is going to make his first strike okay. against the uninjured wolf that's right there. So that is a 26 to hit. That will definitely hit. And that is going to be for 16 bludgeoning damage. Alrighty. Actually, uh, uh, um, not just 16, it's going to be 18 because I'm raging. Okay. Sorry, can you use these mechanics? <laughs> That's alright. And then, I believe once the rage activates... Yep. Once I hit this and the wolf goes to turn me around, you just see me thwip out of existence as I teleport right behind the other one, about 15 feet away. Okay. And then I strike that one with my second attack. All right. With advantage. Ooh, that is a 12. 12 is going to miss. Hmm. So as he whiffs his second attack with his, with his giant maul... That will be his turn. All right, and you see the the first dire wolf that's uh, off to the left uh, yips and looks back behind it to see nothing and looks a little confused around as it continues having its paws right on top of Red Streak. At the top of the order, the rest of you hear this... And the ground around you starts to vibrate a little bit as popping out of the ground those... D those dug tunnels were not grave robbers in the area. You had entered a bullet's territory. And it bursts out of the ground here and is going to leap right here between everybody in the corner. <laughs> and so it moved 15 feet. It's going to land on its feet. Each character, so both dire wolves, red a streak and Krom uh, need to make... Uh, oh, it's going to land in your space. So we're going to have it land for most effect right there. So both Ouch. Dire Wolves and Red Streak uh, will need to make a... Let me link it here for everybody. Ooh, a DC definitely. 16 strength save. Ouchie. Let's go. Let's go, 918. Direwolf 1 gets an 11, and the other one gets natural 20, 23. All right. First natural 20 is the enemy. That's right. <laughs> All right, so you are uh, knocked prone on a successful save. You only take half damage and is not knocked prone, and you're pushed five feet out of the space. So the first wolf 
Or sorry, that was the second wolf that made it. Is going to move over here and take half damage. Okay, and then this wolf is going to take all of that, which I think, yep. So the large wolf that you had just teleported behind Krom falls dead underneath the bullet. How's Red Streak doing? Uh, it's half damage, right? If you made the save and then you get to move, I'll move the token so you can move it uh, where you want. I assume it would just be pushed back. All right, and you're already prone, so you just kind of you stay prone. Uh, so w would it be half damage between, so... Both, it would so be... six bludgeoning and five slashing instead okay. of 12 and 10. All right, you're still alive? Still, 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 he's on the floor. Okay, <laughs> all right, so you see this giant creature burst out of the ground, begin to snarl, leaps in the air, and lands right on the wolves in Red Streak. Red Streak, you barrel roll out of the way and just get a slight hit and slash as you roll. One of the dire wolves manages to see it come in and looks out of the way as well, but gets hit by the other claw. The third dire, the second dire wolf, however, is not so lucky, and this thing just decimates the dire wolf as it goes down limp. Uh, but now you are dealing with a very large underground monstrosity-like creature that is very angry. That is its turn. Birdhouse, what you doing? All right, Birdhouse, noticing that uh, his fur or his new friend that he met is uh, a little bit injured, is going to come up, and you see him kind of swirl his hands together as he is going to use Twilight Sanctuary. So that's supposed to give me a 30-foot spear around me, and every creature that ends their turn in there gets uh, either 1d6 plus my cleric level, so that's 1d6 plus 6, 10 points if... Or they, end, I end an effect on them and they become frightened. So, alrighty. Let's see if I can give you a nice little uh, token here. What color do you want it to be? Uh, something that's not too damaging to the eyeballs. Okay. There we All go. Right. You're just shedding off some light there. Okay. All right. And I will roll my temp HP, and then that will be my turn. Alrighty. Red so, streak. Uh, what is that? You begin your turn. Uh, so. <laughs> Alright, so I get 12 temp HP for yeah, that. Okay. Nice. Alright, so it's roll. when you end your turn. Alright, so you, you feel this bright light emanating over you as you start prone. See that coming from your new friend, Birdhouse. Um, and you realize it's very warm and comforting, and it's probably a good idea to stay within that warm glow. Awesome. Um, I will... Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. But, uh, so Retrick's going to use his movement to stand back up. Okay. Uh, so that's half my movement speed, right? Yep. Uh, and he is going to chuck the his uh, hand axe at the wolf over here. Okay. So, um, that is... Actually, you rolled away, so there's no disadvantage on that. You're five feet, ten feet away, so you're good to go. Seventeen. That is a hit. Okay, and your second attack. So the hand axe comes back to him, and he chucks it again at him. Uh, how does the hand axe come back to him? It has a magical property that returns to my hand after being thrown. Okay, is that an artificer thing? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Just checking. So he throws it, hits him, comes back, and then chucks it again. All right, so the second one, as the hand axe hits for the second time, you, the wolf, you hit it right in the jugular, and it slumps down to the ground, lifeless. You've taken it out. Hand axe comes back, um, and I am going to... I'm going to uh, use my bonus action to uh, use my boots that also have an artificer uh, property to teleport away from this uh, monster. Okay. Uh, so would it would it be safe to assume that since they were coming from this direction that Red Streak would have walked this path right here? Yes. So he's going to uh, teleport up to 15 feet. Right, 10, 15. 
Uh, his boots are going to light up with a little bit of magic, and he's going to poof and appear right over these rocks over here. Uh, he's going to yell, Get him, Grey Streak! And I end my turn. All right. <laughs> All right, and roll your temp HP. Oh, yeah? So 1d6 plus 6, because you're still in my 30-foot sphere. Nice. I love this ability bow so much. All right, seven temporary hit points to Red Streak. All right, Steel Defender. Uh, he's going to use his action to uh, just use dodge. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. All right, that brings us to B1RD. Seeing the increased threat from the bullet, the intensity and, and glow in B1RD's red eyes is going to to ramp up a little bit and a uh, red beam of red of uh, powered energy is going to blast out of his eyes into the bullet. A 15? Uh, that energy just shoots right over the top as it brings its head down getting ready to attack this defender in front of it. It's a miss. You get another bolt at level 5, so... From the resident warlock here, you're good. You got one more. <laughs> and we're going to we're going to fire another another laser. Ooh, natural Yikes. one. All right, and kind of relearning your equipment and how it all works. You kind of check the barrel, and <laughs> it goes off right in front of your face, and you, it's almost like a flare going off into the distance. <laughs> I can fix that. Anything else? I can't fix Be one already. Anything else? This will end my turn. Oh, it was lasers from your eyes. So you kind of look around in confusion then, and whew, they go off like Gambit, uh, learning his powers off in the distance. All right. Um, and you're staying there? Yes. Okay. Roll for your temp HP. 1d6 plus 6, I think it was. Mm-hmm. And while you're doing that, Krom. Okay. Krom, once again, seeing this as a bonus action, he is going to and teleport out and teleport right next to this um giant carapace creature, and he is going to come back, and as he teleports back, he's mid-air coming down in a downward strike with his maul right on top of the sky. And where's your teleport ability coming from? Um, the wild magic surge. Okay. Do I need it's to make a... you roll on the table for that? Oh, I, um, I did when I went into okay, my rage. I it. rolled a two. That's why his hair and tattoos went like a vibrant orange. Okay. And that's just the ability he has until his rage ends. Gotcha. And I am going to attack with advantage with my enraged maul. Okay. 25 to hit. That is a hit. And that'll be 13 points of bludgeoning damage to this guy. Okay. And then, as I do that, I'm going to spin around Whirlwind as it turns around, seeing what hit him, and try to knock him square across the jaw with my second attack. Oh, probably 12. not. 12. Nope, that's a miss. Dang, yeah. He sees it and ducks. <laughs> All right. That's your turn? That will be my turn, yes. All right. Beginning of round three. Uh, having dispatched the two wolves with oh, ease. Oh, uh, roll your temp HP. Yes, we'll do. Too. Thank you. Oh, does that you apply need... to the steel yeah, defender uh, as well? It, it... <clears throat> yeah, I'll give them the same amount I got. Okay. Everyone that's in it, they get either that or frightened. Perfect. And that My does. Choosing. There's no um, restriction on affecting constructs or anything. I guess I should have asked that earlier. No, it, all it says... Is, I think it's just allies. Yeah, this is... Perfect. No, it isn't. It's every creature. Oh, even the bad guys? Yeah, so I choose the effect for him. So he, Oh, I see. So, so if he ends it, him. something else happens. Yep. Perfect. All right. So the bullet seeing uh, it's now flanked is going to burrow into the ground. So Krom and Steel Defender, you get opportunity attacks if you'd like to use your reaction. Oh yeah, definitely gonna whack him one more the steel time. Defender, the Steel Defender does get uh, reaction, Sam? Yes, it does. Uh, you can yeah. use reaction to do a special ability 
that it can do, or it can take an attack of opportunity action as well, using nice. the power of but that, I believe. That uses Red Streak's reaction, though, right? No, it has its, it has a reaction all of its okay. own. Okay, got it. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind it's very similar to the companion a ranger gets, like the beast companion. Right. That makes sense. Okay, still defender missed and Krom, you definitely hit. So this time I connect on the jaw. <laughs> All right, so as it begins to dig and burrow down quickly, it's too fast for Gray Streak, the Steel Defender. But, Krom, you bring a nice baseball swing and hit it right under the jaw, and it disappears down into the dirt. And it is going to come back. That's 5, 10, 15, 20 feet. And then it's going to come back up out of the ground, and it is going to do another deadly leap. And as all of its damage has come from Krom, it is going to leap onto Krom right there and do another one of these. So I let out a, another battle cry. Kazade Manu as it's coming at me, just screaming as it's about to fall. So it does a deadly leap onto you, make a DC sixteen strength save. Ooh. Twenty two. Alright, so you take half damage, so 12, rolled 12 bludgeoning, 19 slashing, so half of that, and you are not oh, prone. Or no, sorry, half of that, and then you get to move uh, one square out of the bullet space. So I'll move the token so you can do that. Oh yeah, I was just going to move right there. Um, so I take half of both the bludgeoning and the slashing. Correct. Because I succeeded, and then another half because I'm raging, so just a fourth. Nice. Very yeah, nice. yeah, oh, there's actually a quarter damage button on here, so that's nice. All right, that is the bullet's turn. Birdhouse. All right, Birdhouse, noticing this thing just came up again. He's going to stomp his large metal feet into the ground, run over here a little bit. Uh, oh, it did end its turn in your aura. Did anything happen? Yes. It... Now, what I don't understand about what it says, if you read it, it says you end one effect on it, causing it to be charmed or frightened. So does that mean I can choose to just end Twilight Sanctuary on it? Um, it's, that's more just like, if one of us was like charmed or friended by a creature, you could instantly end that effect, but you can't cause that effect on a creature. Right. Okay. It's very much a beneficial thing rather yeah. than like, all right. Awesome. Yeah. Well then I guess nothing happens to it. Uh, so I'm going to cast guiding bolt at it at second level. Alrighty. If we're using the flanking rules from, I don't believe we are. We're using raw raw. Okay. Cool, cool. So the flanking was okay, right? Or... No, we haven't been flanking this whole time. Oh, I was, but I can just chalk it up as reckless. That's what I figured you were doing? Oh, no, no. I usually say, okay, I'll know that okay. for the future. I, I'll, I'll say when I'm reckless. I, okay. thought I, I thought we were flanking. I just figured barbarians don't do anything not recklessly. Okay. Where'd you get that notion? <laughs> Alright, a 25. Very nice. 20 Ooh. damage? Holy cow. Well, why did I roll with advantage, though? Because we were just talking about it. So <laughs> that is true. Left. You're just used to it, buddy. You're just used to it. <laughs> we were talking about it so much. Okay. All right. So do a Basis do a re spell. let's do a re-roll then. So just a re-roll. Just a right. re-roll. It won't. For some reason, though, in my spells, it guiding bolt isn't in my second level spells on Foundry. I can only roll it second level from uh, D and D Beyond. Hmm. You should be able to upcast it before you cast it. Well, let me do that. Okay. I'm sorry. I didn't. No. No. You're good. You're good. Oh, I, I see. Mean, cool. Thank you. I got you. Hey, that looks Ooh, good. That's better. Nice. <laughs> All right, so make sure your consumption of spell slots is accurate. Yeah. Then, since you did that twice. It All is right. from here uh, and beyond it. All right, so second. second level guiding bolt for 24 is definitely going to hit. Right. For 25 yeah. damage, go ahead and describe Bird it. Birdhouse just runs over. As you see him pull up his warhammer off of his back and just points right at this thing, and a beaming light just <laughs> zooms right off the end of this warhammer as it zips the end of this bullet's butt and <laughs> pinches it. <laughs> pinches it. Alright. So the next attack on it gets advantage. Yep. Alright. End of your turn. Your twilight domain, does that still affect you? No, that is gone now. That is gone. Alright, I'll fix your... Wait, actually, no, it lasts for a whole minute. Mm -hmm. you, this is every yeah. round, man. You get, yeah. You giving yourself temp HP. Very nice, very nice. All right. Well, I already rolled max, so there's no reason. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, and you haven't gotten a hit. Yeah, done stack. Okay, red streak. 
All right, he is... Red Trick is going to run up a bit, take out the hand axe, and chuck it two times at the beast. You have an advantage on the first. Yep, so re-roll that. Good thing you needed it. <laughs> a two Didn't and a help. three. Either way, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. he's going to use uh, his uh, second attack to okay. try again. All right, so now it's, now it's a regular because that was the first attack. Yeah. So All right, so that 16. should be a nine plus seven. Yeah. All right, a 16. You come back for the second one. You throw it, and it gets right in between two pieces of plate and sticks right in for one damage. Uh, uh, he's going to use his bonus action to make Graystreet come up to the beast. And uh, once again, he's going to use force and power and rend. He sticks his fist out at the beast, and uh, magical energy comes out to attack him. Hey, before your turn's over, don't forget to roll your temp HP to see if you get right. max. And he rolls a nine, which is a miss. Apologies, master. Is... That's my turn. <laughs> I All have right. failed. All right, B1RD. You see this uh, creature is bleeding heavily, and the more it bleeds, the more angry it looks as it's looking like a trapped feral beast. What are you doing? We're going to... Once again, fire the lasers from our eyes. Okay. A 12, you shoot right over the top again. 13, almost I uh, just cutting grass right over the top. Uh, you miss as these lasers stop right before they get to Birdhouse and go over the Steel Defender. Anything else? That is all I have. <laughs> all right. Krom, back to you. Don't forget temp HP in, in, in case it left you, B1RD. But Krom, seeing this thing in his face, he's just going to once again do some giant downward strikes, trying to break the carapace on its head, get to the gooey bit in the middle. And he's going to... Oh, okay, that's what it is. Um, he is going to hit once again with his green ball, this time recklessly. Okay. Get advantage. 19 hits. For 13 points okay. of bludgeoning damage. And... Again, for another 19. Okay. For 15 points of bludgeoning damage on the second attack. All right. It is still up at the end of those, but you get two solid hits. Oh, you... wow. Um, And also with those two attacks as well, since it's kind of like near... um gray streak or my companion as i hit him each attack moves him five feet to the five feet up uh the bullet yes mm -hmm. um is it what size is it is it it's a large, large right with um with my feet with the crusher feet i can with each attack i can move the creature up to five feet in any direction i want so that way yep and then, so I then are you, right... you can move with it okay yeah and then one more um, yep and then um I'll let you decide this because it, he's he, he's not willingly leaving a person's space for like attacks of opportunity, right? But um, yeah. yeah, but um, I step up, and this time instead of sending him straight up, I'm gonna send him like diagonally, so just one space to the left, if you could. So he was there for your second attack, and so he'd move and then, there, um, diagonally up five feet. No, no, th this is where you'd moved him before. Yeah, so um, move him like... Oh, I see. Like that. Yeah, I like Got that. It. Exactly. Because I don't want him close there. And then I'll get like right up in his face again. Just taking like two big... Like one big step to hit him. Yep. Another step to like get in position. And then another hit to move him. And then get right back up into his face. And so you guys see like... almost like two big golf swings with this hammer coming up. The first <laughs> hit moves it back five feet. The second hit, he comes a little bit more to the right and knocks it away. So now that... Uh, it's only Krom and the Bullet that are uh, in melee with each other. Is that in your turn? Um, that does. I completely forgot about that ability, and I want to use that a lot. Um, All right. Yeah, that is my turn. I need, a cr I need a crit. All right. <laughs> it is now the Bullet's turn. Oh, man. What is it going to do? Because if it does the same thing, it might die. I think... Seeing as you are the one that hit it, it is just going to lash out at you in the only thing it knows how to do and try and bite. He has advantage because I rolled He reckless. doesn't need advantage because I got a natural 20. 
Oh, Ooh, oh, 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 that is 61 piercing damage. I have because you're raging, you lucky duck. I have because I'm raging. Whoa, that's... Oh, um, let, let, let me roll for my 10th HP. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Why wasn't he doing this the whole time? Okay, so I, ha I have nine there. Okay. Yeah, because I had one left, so I'll replace that one with a nine because temp doesn't stack. All right, so your 61 then... rounded down goes to 30 piercing damage. Yeah. Ooh, that was oh. a good one. And, oh, and my it's, word. And, it, and it's realizing it's at the end of its life and there's no escape. It just lashes out and the only thing it knows how. And you just hear this roar and these giant pincers just mash down and rip into the side of you. Uh, but your barbarian rage, you only sort of feel it. And the magic... Uh, you see the magic flare in Krom's uh, hair and everything as his colors start going in rainbow colors as he's standing there taking it as this bullet is uh, on its final death throes. Birdhouse. Birdhouse looking at this thing as it just made this vicious attack. He, he's just going to, under his breath, mumble, just say some weird gibberish as he casts Toll the Dead on the bullet. Okay, DC 15 wisdom save. With a five, it fails. All right, and that should be... It should have rolled... Um, All right, Birdhouse. 2D, 2D 12 on that, because he's already taken damage. Uh, you... The 10 was enough. So, how do you oh. how do you end this fight? All right. As Birdhouse just watches Dwarven Friend get pummeled he's gonna come up and say this and as he does all the hands reach up out of the ground as they pull this bullet back down into the ground as you see it just disappear underneath the, the dirt and in classic toll the dead spell you, all of you look around and hear the gong of a of a single bell toll but you know there's no bell nearby it's the magic all right you look Crump around spit some crumbs spit some blood out Wipes his mouth. As on um, the rage dies down, the hair slow, the hair and the markings slowly fade back to their original, like um, burgundy red and like royal blue, respectively. And you look around, and it seems the danger has passed for now. How is everyone doing? Does anyone need anything? Temp HP does not heal my regular HP, right? Nah, it's just temp. Okay. How long is that does that now? last? One minute. Okay, so all the temp HP is then gone? Yes. Okay. Mm. Does temp HP actually... I thought it lasted until, like... Wait, I, yeah. I, like, it I can, thought I stayed there until it was used. Yeah. yeah like, you can okay. grant... Like, you can I think grant it's gone it like, yeah. from rolling that ability. Yeah. Okay, so just it getting, it, just getting yeah. it lasts the hour. Yeah. A minute. Yeah. Okay, got it. So oh, then, yeah, God. if you had temp HP, you get to keep it? I had temp HP. <laughs> All right. I mean, if I mean, if you're, if I mean, if you, if this still is like staying up for another minute, if there's like another round, I'll take another round of um temp HP though. That's true. It's the last, if you, the last a minute, you know. Yeah. If you keep it up, everybody can get at least one roll of temp HP to add to their HP. Because yes, there we were only in round four, so you had plenty of time. Nice. Uh, since it was round four, I'm going to try one. I know, I'll, I'll take the eight. <laughs> Steel Defender has a lot of temp HP. It, oh, temp well, it, does, HP it doesn't, doesn't stack. stack. Yeah. So just be your highest roll. Oh. <laughs> Man, he's like, oh. <laughs> Which was the last one. Okay, okay. So. Okay. Um, I, I could use a little bit of passion. Wow, I really don't have... Yeah, you look around, and, and Krom looks a little injured from that big bite he took. Red Streak, uh, as he was the tank in that battle, apparently, uh, right. he, he's not looking very good either. Gray Streak looks over. Master, you seem to be bleeding. It's obvious. Give me a second. <clears throat> and uh, he's All right. going to. Unless if you, robot over there, have any healing abilities. Yes, but please don't call me robot. And as he sure. says that, his head folds down as he presses a button on the back of his head, and a big old blue aura just comes out. And for the next minute, I'm, we're just going to use this for a second. And we'll just let everyone roll that until they're good. 
All right, so what healing are you doing? Dog. Uh, what do you mean? I, yeah, who's who's doing what healing? Are you oh, are you are you attempting after this a, blue aura comes out? What do you mean? I'm confused by the question. Oh, okay, so you're doing the healing. That yeah, I'm doing the healing okay. for okay. everyone, okay. and okay. for the next minute, you guys get to roll two d six, basically. So should we just because it's like, a bonus action until you guys are good? Should we just right? do twelve? Should we just roll like twelve d six? Basically, right? six. Rounds. I don't know. It depends on how Aaron would rule it. So one creature to regain two d six. So and it lasts for one minute. So that's ten options, right? Yeah, ten ten rounds, times. Yeah, ten times. Yeah. Okay, so. Why don't you? We'll divvy one yeah. at a time on who wants to use the aura of Vitality. I would assume Red Streak would start. Yeah, I would oh, start uh, it with this, Red this Streak. This isn't like it doesn't have like charges. This is just if you're in the aura, you get it. But he gets to he picks one. Yeah, creature. it's only one person though. Oh yeah, let, yeah. Let's do yeah. Yeah. So Red Streak, why don't you start using them up and see how far you get? So do do one at a time. All right. So there's there's one. Okay, you got seven. Another seven. There's a four. There's an eight. And a seven. Okay, so that's five of the uses. That should be up to max now. Okay, Crom, you got five to choose from. Okay. To use, I'll, I'll use. Um, since I have five to use now, I'm just gonna use. I'm just gonna roll three at the same time. That sounds good to you. Okay. Since we, since no one, everyone else is good. That's true. Yeah. So I'll roll sixty-six for twenty-one. Ow. Yeah. Um. Apply healing, and I'm back to full. Perfect. With my eight, eight temp. All and right. And then, seeing um birdhouse. Very much comes in handy. Maybe. Maybe I can help you use it again. And I am going to lay my right hand that has the Dwarven Rune as it kind of glows with this blue arcane magic as I lay my hand on um, Birdhouse once again. But this time, instead of like this bolstering to his like um, ability checks and like this bolstering to his skills, he actually feels some as if I transfer some of that arcane ability to his person. So I still roll a d3. Okay. Hope this works. This is what I think. Oh! There did I go. just get a d3 spell? Yeah, you get. Um, you can legit. get a spell slot back of third level or lower of your choice. That is very nice. Thank you. Yeah. I really, I really. That's a good ability. It's a. It's a. It's a good one. Um, that is the last use of it too. All, All right. right. While you guys are doing that, um, give me a perception check for around the area. All right. Let's do it. Pretty right, perceptive. Can I pull Chuck and say this is higher than my passive? <laughs> what well, B1RD's having a rough time. Natural Man. one. All right, so looking. They need at, to change your programming. As you're looking around, Red Streak, um, you you get that healing and you're you're kind of getting that warm feeling as your your wounds are closing up. Your fortitude is getting back up. You kind of look over the corner of your eye and under one of the trees. You, you see a small chest that looks like may, maybe when, when the bullet came through, it maybe dislodged it up out of the earth, um, and the latch on it is broken, and you can see that there are two items inside. I command Greystrick to go up to the chest and open it up. All right, roll me a d100. I'm going, yeah, oh yeah, I'm not going to do anything, never mind. Ooh, a four. All right, in it... You find a potion of superior healing, and the second item, roll another d100. Come on, BB. Uh, you also find, uh, luckily it's labeled, both of these are labeled for you, so you don't have to get them identified. Um, <laughs> you find a potion of heroism. Ooh. Can you link those in the chat, DM? I can. Thank you, thank you. The healing, I think we understand. We know yes. that one, but it's the heroism. So her for heroism, for one hour after drinking it, you gain 10 temp HP that lasts for an hour. Uh, for the same duration, you are under the effect of the bless spell. The 
Uh, blue potion bubbles and steams as if boiling. Good to know. I will not be sharing them. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I was going to be like, wait, what? <laughs> what did so. you find in the chest? Fresh streak. Bring it here. There is no need to share. You won't need those. Uh, maybe you need to put more some than us. Put some away. I found it first. You'll get your share of the gold when we come back. You don't need these. I, I don't no need to be hasty, my friend. We're all companions here. Share a drink after this, I'm sure. Perhaps. Perhaps. Alright, so you continue your journey through the field towards the base of the mountain. Eventually, after another hour or so of walking, being careful, uh, you realize that it was only a few more minutes before you stopped seeing these signs of digging and realized uh, you probably left the Bullets territory, as you don't know if there was just one or there were others nearby, but you make it out nonetheless. Eventually, you reach the base of the mountain, and you see a single peak rising, ascending about 4,000 feet above you. As you evaluate the best path to take, you see about halfway up the mount, there appears to be a large crevice in the side of the mount. It's likely a sheltered place where a creature could set up a place of safety. The journey up to there, uh, there's no clear path, um, and it's going to be an arduous climb. Uh, you're not going to need ropes or pythons or anything like that, but uh, there's going to be a bit of bouldering and uh, strenuous activity to get up to that part of the mountain. Mm. I am going to do this. Explain Wait, it's that not night for... time. It's not night time. Okay. Can't do that. Remember, explain your stuff for our podcast listeners. Yes, sorry. Okay. Sorry about that. I was excited to fly. Birdhouse okay. attempted to do steps of night, but it is daytime. <laughs> he tried to step on, like, dust, and he <laughs> couldn't. He just whiffed it. <laughs> My software doesn't have the deciphering to this. Oh, right, oh, it's it, light out. Uh, I, it believe is... I, can, I believe I can transport our party up the mountain uh, one at a time. It should not only take a moment. How do you plan on getting us up the mountain? I have jetpacks in my feet, so I will just embrace you one at a time and fly us up there, set you down. And come back down and get another. Mm. It sounds risky splitting up. Can I um? Can I see if there's a way to climb up to this entrance? Oh, it, it definitely just looks. Um, it, it's just steep, uh, and, and so you, you definitely think you'd be able to make it. It's just going to take uh, a little bit of time and uh, strenuous effort to to get up there. Um, so it, it's like it's like a hike up a big mountain. Okay. I I was born in the mountains. I can climb this. I'll see you all at the top. Hopefully you can follow. And I'm, I'm gonna attempt to climb. I'm going to cast spider climb on Gray Streak, and hop on hop on his back, and uh, it's gonna make it easy for him to climb up the mountain for yes. an hour. I was hoping you'd use him as a mount. Right. Well, B1RD, do you think you could Onward. carry me? I think I'm heavier than you. My first force is sufficient. All right, then we'll see you at the top. All right, so you guys start trekking your way up. Red Streak and Crom uh, are uh, trekking their way uh, up the mountain. Uh, B1RD and Birdhouse in a lovely robotic embrace uh, uh head their way up so b1rd how loud are these jet packs quote unquote on your feet because there's no such thing as a jet in the forgotten realms they're they're, they're not loud uh, just a, a mild whooshing sound as the force blasts up from my heels Okay. Like the wind. So you are going to be the first one to get there. Um, B1RD, give me a perception check. Can I help him with that? Uh, sure. Since I'm strapped uh, and back. <laughs> let me have both of you just do singular perception check rolls. All right. You proficient in that? Oh my gosh. <laughs> B1RD rolled another natural one. 
Okay. You're just not having a good day. No. All right, Birdhouse got a 15. So, uh, B1RD, you are just heading straight towards your destination. Uh, you're not really paying attention to anything else going on there. Birdhouse, as uh, you start to get closer, um, and actually B1RD, where would you, as you start to approach this entrance, you see there are some trees that are kind of growing in this ravine. Obviously, water um, seeps in here to allow a little bit more vegetation to grow. Uh, the cliff face, uh, you kind of come to a U shape, and you're entering in from the south, and there are steep walls all around to the north, the east, and the west. Where would you like to land as you see that there now are larger trees kind of blocking the view into the main part of this area? We will look for a, a level patch of ground outside of the enclosed area. Okay. Uh, preferably where we can see our companions coming up the hill. Okay. Uh, so as you are flying uh, and keeping an eye on the, your companions below you, but not quite entering the uh, little uh, glaive area yet. Uh, you come down, birdhouse, as they land, uh, you catch a glimpse of way up in the top. Uh, you thought you saw some kind of movement. You couldn't quite out make what it was or how big it was, but there were some rocks that tumbled down, and you're not sure if it's just a result of the wind or if there was something else uh, kind of waiting up higher. I'm going to Bonk bird's head. Hey, over there, I saw some rocks. Try to be quiet. All right, Manny or uh, Red Streak and Crom, uh, you hike your way up. So, um, give me both of you. Give me a uh, survival check as you hike your way up this mountain. Survival. Roll. Like I said, I was born in these mountains. <laughs> well, right. not these ones, but I was born in mountains. <laughs> um, and actually, Red Streak, you don't have to because you're riding uh, Gray Streak, so you can disregard oh. it. You are fine. Uh, but Crom, <laughs> like I said, you're born in these mountains. No problem. You get a little bit out of breath as it's a little higher than you're used to, but uh, you're covered <sighs> as, you, That's as you all meet up. Uh, you are outside a larger kind of uh, stand of trees that enter into this uh, protected area of the mountain. Um, everybody here, uh, give me a perception check. Perception. We'll do this as a group check. 17 for Krom. Okay. Oof. Red Strix has been rolling high. The Red Strix no pluses. Right. Yeah, no plus to that. Okay, so as you look into here, uh, you see there are, um, th this is definitely a protected area of the mountain. You're not seeing really any signs of habitation. Uh, you don't see any tracks in the ground, but looking around, if what you are looking for is a creature, uh, this would be the most likely place that they would set, uh, set up a camp. Uh, so what would you like to do? We should investigate the area. Yeah. I'm gonna make note of the ground and just try to see uh, if we see any prints, any sort of bees, any kind of notions of movements, whether or not they could be frequent or recent or not. That was covered in your perception roll. You just All said. right. Cool. cool I'm cool. going to walk around the outskirts of the forest. In one turn, like, so basically run around the forest, like, edge, you moving 70 feet. And during that, I am going to, as an action, use Magic Awareness. Okay. And I'll link that for you. All right, and read that for our listeners. Of course. Oh. Can only let me roll. Oh, okay, it, it comes up. So basically, as part of a wild magic barbarian, I can open my awareness to the presence of concentrated magic around me in the vicinity. And so until the end of my next turn, hence why I'm moving 70 feet in a circle and dashing around, I know the location of any spell or magic item within 60 feet of myself that isn't behind total cover. Um, and I learn what school of magic it is from, and as well, when I sense it. 
All right, so as you kind of walk the edge of this uh, glade, and it's only, the opening's only about 100 feet before the cavern or the mountain walls uh, come back up. Um, it, it's very, almost like a natural wall that's been placed here. Uh, you do not detect any magical items within 60 feet of you. Okay. There's no magical essence here that I can tell, but um, maybe we should head further in after some investigation from you. Uh, and who wants to investigate, and what are you looking for? I will investigate, and we will look for signs of activity, uh, travel path, things of that nature. Go ahead. There you go. All or nothing for B1RD, natural 20. <laughs> All right, so as you look around, you see... Uh, you watch Krom as he kind of does this feeling. You see the, the pulsing on his skin of his tattoos and hair. Is it? You're not quite sure what he's doing. But you just look, and you can see in the trees there, there's one area that appears to be worn down a little bit and a couple of broken branches as if a some kind of medium-sized creature um, or a few of them over several uh, times uh, has traveled through a section of these trees to go into the glaive also while you're while you're looking around you kind of look back and you're not sure why you didn't see it before but you see there are large dried droppings that have this splatter appearance so it appears that something a flying creature um has been here long enough to leave dried droppings and uh they have fallen from the air any bones uh, do you want to look into the uh, droppings? Yes. yes. Birdhouse is going to go up and put it on a mouth, even though he can't <laughs> taste things. So, oh, does yeah. Birdhouse to... have taste buds? <laughs> no, he that, doesn't. But... <laughs> look for bones in the droppings. Mm. It seems to be droppings of some kind. Okay. Uh, you look <laughs> in the droppings in uh, Birdhouse. You... Uh, you don't get anything from that. You do. You're right, I really don't. <laughs> uh, Red Streak, you look... Uh, two. <laughs> uh, you do see bones, um, but it appears to be bones of small animals. Uh, rabbits, uh, voles, things like that. About the biggest thing, you think you maybe find a fox femur, but that's about the biggest bone you find. I don't believe this is the area we're supposed to be looking in. These... Uh... These bones are far too small for the cattle that was killed uh, earlier that we saw. I mean, it's Maybe. possible this creature killed something else, no? Well, perhaps these are the droppings of its offspring. We must be wary. We must continue. Before we do, come here. I would like to give you all a little bit of this. Mm. As I reach out and touch you all, and I give you the blessing of the night. Vigilant blessing. And tell oh, them what it does. It to every, you can give it to so, everybody? Yes, for the next hour. I, I thought it said, it says one, one willing, but in my thing, I thought it said, oh yeah, yeah I guess it is only one. Yeah, I this thought is I, one creature. Read Don't that incorrectly. Us... Oh, that's because I linked the wrong thing. That's my bad. I'm so sorry. That's not what you wanted to do? Yeah, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> I mean, if you uh, want to hook your boy up with it, though, by all means. <laughs> yeah, because I... But, I, I... I would you all know I can do that. All right, I think this is what I want to do. And the that you are Here speaking of is give advantage on initiative rolls for an hour to one creature. But yes. you're doing what else? This is what I wanted to give you guys was Eyes of Night. And up to me and up to four willing creatures are going to be able to see up to 300 feet of dark vision for the next hour. So this okay. should be beneficial to us as we head into this next pack, uh, passage. Ah, I can see. I I can see everything. All right, very nice. All right, so you head into this forest glaive. Uh, the journey inside, uh, you creep into this crevice, and do you want to do so stealthily? How do you want to move in? Yes. I'll do I'm stealthily. Not stealthy. Yeah. My, I'm assuming my metal is clanking against <laughs> this, like... You know, a pocket full of change. I, I'm doing. I'm not selfie either, but I'm doing my best. <laughs> All right, I will attempt it. All I right. feel like I. Should, it so doesn't give say me, disadvantage. Give but me I a feel group like stealth check. Oh, this with disadvantage. 
Mm. You should Grey Streak also roll? Uh, yes. Uh, you should have a stat block on D&D Beyond with this stuff on there. Yeah, yeah I put yeah. I put it all in Foundry as well. You awesome. should be able to roll right from it. There you go. Yeah. All right, so a one, not an, a dirty one. An I 11, told you, I'm a tall one, a fourteen, yeah. and a thirteen. All right, so you creep into this area. You see before you a small crescent-shaped oasis protected by sheer cliffs towering above you. Directly across, about 80 feet away, through some trees, lies a large cave entrance. Standing in front of the cave are two humanoids, dressed in leather, covered with loose black cloaks. One is armed with a quiver and a bow, the other appears to be unarmed. The entrance to the cave is above your current position by about 15 feet, and a natural walking path appears to give easy access to the left-hand side. The trees in the area block some of your view of the entire area. As you take in the scene, which I will show to you now, a small bunny hops up the natural ramp towards the people. The archer pulls out something from his pocket and scatters it on the ground as the bunny hops forward and starts eating. Suddenly, the unarmed man kicks the bunny as hard as he can, sending it flying down onto the level you are standing. The bunny lands about 30 feet from you, motionless on the ground. As the two men laugh, you now see a dozen more motionless bunnies scattered on the ground in front of you. Seeing this, Krom just starts furling his brow as he takes a potion out of his bag. It's a clear liquid with this small red bead in the center that just keeps expanding and reducing in size. He just pops off the top and he drinks it. And he drinks a potion of growth. All right, so does that make you large? Yep, I am um, for, for four hours, I fall under the effects of the enlarge reduced spell, specifically the enlarge factor. So I double in size. I'm about, yeah, I'm about 10 feet tall right now. And um, and I get an extra boost to damage and strength checks, and I just start barreling. F I start barreling forward, surprising them. Um, yeah. I'm as as you grow the uh, in size, the two uh, humanoids look up and see you. Kind of the bushes around you rustle. And their eyes grow wide, so you won't get I a surprise out, round. I let out this. I let out this <laughs> deep, like my voice just become like came mushroom, just like Ooh, as I just start running forward. Oh, and my maul as well grows to this titan-sized hammer as I just start running at them. All right, everybody, roll some initiative. Let's do it. Come on, baby. Advantage for no reason. <laughs> hey, at least you have advantage, man. Wait, um. Bo, did you give that vigilant blessing to anybody or no? No, I was uh, incorrect. Click. Oh, it should have uh, just been the uh, 300 feet of dark vision. No, we I all rolled have. really well. I mean, vigilant blessing is still great. All right, we've got almost everybody. Yeah, sorry, I was checking on something right quick. That's all right. Okay, starting with a 21 Crom Stonefist. You are sure enough first. Uh, you Excellent. see that this uh, this wall that the the two humanoids are on, it's about 15 feet, um, and then the path is off to the left to get up there, so it's your choice on how you want to uh, approach. Yeah. Seeing, um... I don't know, I kind of want to avenge my bunny friend. <laughs> uh, Reggie. Yeah, right! <laughs> I don't know understand that, but... <laughs> uh, I am going to... Dang, um... Yeah. Yeah, I already said I have my mall out, so I'm not gonna like retcon that. I am going to. So I am. So I'm large. I am gonna move. I don't. I don't have the instinctive pounce either, which sucks. Um... Yeah, I'm gonna move thirty-five feet. Wait, 
straight there. And then screw it, I got I got temp HP. I'm gonna dash right up to them. Okay. I have 30 points right there, and then it'll take 15 feet to climb, so I'm just going to end my turn okay. <laughs> right there. All right, so you guys see Krom just barrel out of this as he's now doubled in size. Krom's, what, five feet normally? He was like, he was like, um, actually, I have his height in my description. Let so me, he was four foot seven. Okay. So, so he's double that, so he's like. So about nine and like, a half feet. Yeah, nine and a half feet tall now. Uh, he just barrels through this as he just charges in a straight dead sprint and gets right up to the bottom here. The uh, humanoid that had just uh, punted the bunny kind of cocks his head to the side and looks amused. And he is going to cast Hold Fire Person call. on Krom. I need you to make a wisdom save. Yes! <laughs> oh man! 11. You need an eleven, and you got an eleven. The the, the 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 death of this bunny has fueled my rage. <laughs> All right. No one will survive. The you feel your muscles start to tense, and you wonder for a second if it's the effects of that you you had a bad potion. You're not quite sure, but you see the the humanoid reaching his hand out and coming in a grip and uh, you see him get, uh, get this look of frustration as the spell doesn't hold as they go to hold up we just go oh, i just like flex my back and my arms don't just break free and he's gonna run over here to the left and kind of hide behind the trees to get away from the giant dwarf that's now coming he, at him he's the one that punted it right yes yeah, I'm, I'm looking at that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The one Try with the future. bow and arrow pulls out the arrow and is going to line up a very nice shot at you and actually put two arrows on there. And the first one is going to loose an 11, which that I doubt miss. hits. And that then these uh, strings out the second one real quick, shoots that at you. Oof. Also For a miss. nine. All right, these don't even miss. They just You take your giant maul now, and you just block them as they come in, and the two arrows, tink, tink, off to the side. I was the archer, the same way. The, you see the archer eyes get kind of big and run off in the same direction as uh, her friend there. All right, Red Streak. Hey, Red Streak and Gray Streak are both going to run uh, where they can... Uh, Get up the 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 left path. So okay. Going to go. <laughs> okay. He's not. They're not being like selected how I want them to. Okay, hold on. I think they're both selected right now. I was gonna grab them both. You can just do one at a time if you want. Yeah. So. 5, 10, 15, 20, 30. Uh, I think they're both still selected. Can you, like, unselect them for me? Uh, no. That's on your oh, end. Oh, there we go. That should do it. Here, I'll move them for you. Just right next to them like that? Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, he wasn't moving. And we're both going to take a bonus action to keep running. Okay. Yeah. 30. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why he wasn't doing that. All right. Okay. And uh, that is our turn. Okay. No bonus actions. Uh, bonus action was to. Oh, no. That was a dash. No. No. No bonus action. Okay. Let's get together. B1RD. From your vantage point, you saw the. You can still see the uh, one with the bow through the gap in the trees there, running off to the left hand side. One wolf. Fire our eye lasers. What's your is that 120 range? Yes. Okay, just making sure. 95 feet away. All right. Um, actually, so at that point, the ledge that they are on is still about 10 to 15 feet there. So that archer is all the way back up against the wall. So you can only see about her head. So from there, she's gonna get um, partial cover. 
Okay. Uh, you send a blast off, and it goes right into the ledge below her feet. Second one, you correct, and it goes, and it goes right above her head into the rock wall behind her. Okay, we will progress forward. Okay. I'm stuck. Oh. Because I'm hitting a wall. Nope, I will, uh, fix you here. You should have... Yep. Now I disappear. Yep, there you go. I had to put there, in a new token for you. Okay. Can you Still move that one? The wall. No. There we go. There you go. <clears throat> All right, so you step into this field, and you are cautiously stepping over the field of unconscious or dead bunnies uh, in front of you. What? It's a field? Uh, yeah, an, an open area. <laughs> okay. I thought there was, like, multiple, like, oh my goodness, these guys are awful. Yeah, no, there's, like, 15 of them down there. Oh my god, they're all... Yeah. Oh, that, that <laughs> makes stepped them over them. Okay, this is as far as I'm going. This is my turn. All right. Krom, from behind the bushes, there is a cultist. Comes behind you here, and he is going to cast a spell at you. Oh. <sighs> Uh, he is going to cast Bring it. Spiritual Weapon. And we will pull out... We will use uh, that one there. And that is going to get an attack on you as it comes out. So that would be... Of course, it didn't roll an attack roll. Yeah, it usually doesn't. Okay. So I will manually do it. So... A 22! 22 will hit. All right, you take a total of four force damage. Is that halved while you're bigger? A force mm. damage is not actually. Yeah, force damage, no. Yeah, Unless I'm not, he I'm not, was um, bear totem. Yeah, I'm not that. I'm not that barbarian. <clears throat> okay. Um, that is going to be his action, and then. He is going to try and step back and hide back in these bushes, but Bird, you did see him there, so you know he's there. Do I see him disappear in the bushes? Uh, yeah, you you are aware that someone cast a spell behind you, and you heard that as well. And that will bring us back to Krom. I did not get to go. Uh, why weren't you in the turn order? I was in the turn order. <laughs> what happened to you? I'm not sure. Okay. He rolled a, he rolled a four. And he just like, That's what happened. All right. He's going to charge 30 feet up here. Is this a wall? Are these bushes walls? Yep. There you go. You should be good now. Whoa. I feel like that made my token larger. All right. I'm going to charge up right here next to you, Mr. B1RD. Um, There's not really much else I can do. I'm also going to cast Spiritual... Weapon. So as Birdhouse hops out of these bushes, you see him run up next to a B1RD. <clears throat> and as he pulls this wooden hand out again, the stump, the wood kind of contorts and becomes a magical looking wand. As you see a spiritual weapon poof, ploof up next to this other spiritual weapon. All right. Are you able to pull it out or do you need me to do it? Um, Let me cast a spell and see if it'll let me pull it up. Spiritual weapon. Battle. It does not let me pull it up. Okay. Uh, it's in. Uh... All right. Here it is. There we go. That's oh, you so got weird. it. That one. That There's one mine. That one. Mine's attack roll. Mine's better. Did it do an attack roll? Yeah, it did. You got a twenty-two. Well, so did his though. His did it like that. Yeah, Aaron mine just did the weird damage. Okay, twenty-two. Uh, and you're doing it on the other spiritual weapon. Or where? Where? Who are you attacking? Yeah, I'm attacking the other spiritual weapon. But I'm saying, Aaron, if if we're rolling it like that, <laughs> yours did that. Yours rolled oh, a okay. three and then a one. Oh, that's what that was. Okay. Yeah. So wait, if that's, if that's so then you took one it. damage. Or no, you well, took no damage because it missed. Yeah, three, yeah. three doesn't hit. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So 22 uh, for nine points of force damage on this spiritual weapon. All right. I Actually, in the 12 years of playing this game, I have never had anyone attack a spiritual weapon. <laughs> Do you have the I've AC stats? I've never used stats? one, so... <laughs> are there, ace, are there uh, stats on a spiritual weapon? Uh, it's, no, it doesn't take damage. <laughs> it doesn't. I don't think. 
I think it just <laughs> swings through it or something. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's incorporeal. All right, all right. Then maybe, or like, yeah, and and since move? you can cast Spiritual Weapon, you would know this, so I'll let you recast it somewhere else, but keep that roll. I was well, going to keep it there. I can move it up to 20 feet from there. <laughs> so from here, it should have vision. Well, when it comes out, it, uh, it attacks. Okay. So yeah, wherever you send so this cultist oh, I see, I see, would have I retreated see. in the bushes, so you could put it right next to him. All right, I'm gonna put it right next to him. Okay. I can't time. see him though. Um. The my the I'm saying right. the, my spirit. But your your weapon your weapon would be good there. Okay. So all right, so you see him. Sorry take about the confusion, him. everybody. That will be my turn. Well, that is the part of playing new characters every episode. So. <laughs> well, and well, playing as spellcasters. That's right. I was going. I was going to say you could have summoned your spiritual weapon at one of the guys on the ledge. You have a sixty foot range for it if you wanted to do that. Man, that's a long range. Yeah, I would much rather have done that. Because like, if you can't, because like technically, yeah. yeah, you can't really see that cultist. So yeah. if you just summon it at the archer, or the other cultist on the ledge. Yeah, no, I'd rather summon it at this dude up here. I can see him against the wall that the elf okay. blast that was fired is, is, at. As long as we're in the middle of a retcon, we'll just keep it going. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm also kind of biased because these guys kicked a bunny in front of me. So That's like, right. They've kicked no a few bunnies, deal. as we've seen. Yeah, I saw more. That just got All right. Matter. Okay, so the archer takes the nine Finally. damage as our spiritual weapon appears Beautiful. up on the ledge uh, there. All right. And that is what happened the first time. <laughs> All right, now we're on to round two of Krom. Seeing this puny little cultist guy come out of the shadows and try to bot me, I'm just gonna turn around, crack my neck, and just walk up to him. As I go smack dem, smack dem, kazad amenu, as I rage once again. Okay. And I will roll on the wild search table. Ha 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 You rolled a one! Is that, Wait, I mean, that's Oh, that's, that's not the wild ma magic table. Okay, oh, I thought we yeah, get to roll the on the wild magic, magic. table. Okay, never So mind. as this happens in fashion, with the rage and anger, the tattoos... Oh, no. The tattoos and the hair become this jet black shadowy mass as I just emanate this dark energy as the tattoos on my body lash out in these shadowy tendrils. I... Everyone within... 30 feet of me must succeed on a constitution saving throw of what a 14 all right everyone is away from you except for that cultist that is fine all right oh um the archers within range oh yeah because i was measuring from elsewhere okay you said a con save yep um yeah, yeah everyone else is outside yeah con save from the cultist and the archer okay so that is a seven and then the archer, twenty natural twenty. Okay, so only the um, only the cultist will take this damage. He takes five necrotic damage. Okay. As I and just a note too, since we are playing rules as written, um, the natural twenty on the save. So really, it's just a twenty-three because uh, crits only count for attack rolls. So. Good to know. And then I also gain 1d12 temp HP. Okay. So I already have some, but if I roll better. Nice. I rolled a 12, so I, so I will get. I wish that was the. So I will replace my 8, 12, 8 temp HP. Um, yeah. This is only a one time thing, which is cool. I wish it was something that was repetitive, but there, there's other options. But my hair still. My hair and the tattoos still take this, like, black, and, like, the tattoos themselves seem to be moving as if the tendrils are still there as my rage consumes me and I will recklessly attack this cultist. Alright, go ahead. With my enlarged and enraged maul. So a 27 to hit. Definitely hits. So for... Yeah, so this does 2d6 plus another d4 now, plus all my other bonus, plus a 6. So this is 16 bludgeoning damage. Okay. You should be getting yeah. plus 10 to hit. What do you mean plus 10 to hit? Four, four plus your strength, three from your proficiency, one plus the uh, enraged plus one, and then two plus being enraged. One from the actual maul itself, and two from being enraged. 
on damage rolls. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm adding damage rolls, but not attack no, it's, rolls. Isn't it? Oh yeah, what the hell am I? It's, no, just, it's, it's, on, just it's on both. It's, no, it's just melee damage. I'm almost positive it's both, man. From the resident, from All the right, resident let's barbarian. Let's keep going though. It, it, it's just damage. Check it. Check it. <laughs> okay. Anything um, else? And then I, oh yeah, I, I will do my second attack on him. Okay. Go ahead. Twenty-five is a hit. For enough for another seventeen points of. For another seventeen points of. That is enough large. to destroy him. So how do you so want to do that? So the first one spins him around as like his jaw is just kind of like dislocated, and the second one. Ouch. Smack them. As I literally, you know, go, um, what's what's that game, um, with the with the ground with the moles? I can't think of the whack name right now. Whack a mole. Yeah, I or, whack a mole head. Or Gallagher like body, with a watermelon. I that's better. I Gallagher him. His okay. whole body just breaks. Whack a goblin. Underneath, yeah, it just breaks underneath the complete weight of my weapon. Ooh. And uh, bird and birdhouse, you you kind of see Crom disappear behind the trees a little bit, and you just hear these two giant thwacks, and, and the scream. spiritual weapon that was hovering behind him just goes, whoop, disappears. And then uh, how? Did I I think move like. Do you remember how much I moved? I think it was five or ten feet. You were right here. I think it was ten. Thank you. Um, I am going to then move. I'm gonna use my full movement to get up there where I pinged. Okay. Like up the mountain to climb it. Okay. Um, I am going to instead from down there. Can you move me back to my original spot? Uh, over. I think it was right here. Oh, um, um, where I was after killing oh. the cultist. Okay, right there. I think right there. Um, I am going to instead move five ten, and then long jump. Like up and so a standing long jump. Oh, I'm gonna get a running start of ten feet. Okay. I just don't know the jumping rules off the top of my head. It, it, it's gonna be altered since you're bigger anyway. So I'm just gonna let you do it because it's gonna be cool. You guys, so jump five ten. I based on your strength score. Yeah. So five so I'm gonna, ten, and then you. So I'm gonna move five ten here, and then I'm gonna jump there towards, up to there towards the cultist. Actually, um, how much distance can I get so on this? Good. Oh, what's your, what's your strength score? 19. Okay, yeah. Uh, right. If you jump from here, 18. yep, you can land right there. And I just land right in front of him. As I, as I like, kind of like my leg, my knees are a bit, I just stand up and I just look this man in the eyes with the rage of a thousand suns. You leap 17 him. feet up this uh, large cliff and land with a large thud. <sighs> Very similar to the bullet you just encountered, actually, as you land right next to him. Um, and I don't know if I can do this, but is he scared or intimidated at all? You've done enough right now, so we're just going to leave it there. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. I just want to, like, I see on the cake, maybe. That's fine. I'm up in this guy's face, though. I'm loving it. Okay. That's my turn. All right. The the cultist here is going to, it is his turn. Uh, seeing this giant dwarven beast who just destroyed his friend in two swings coming at him is going to try and command you. So make a wisdom save. Come on, baby. Oh! Ooh. All right. I rolled a 10. And he's going to say, grovel. And you are prone. I just fall down, grumbling. <laughs> and then is going to back away even more. Can yeah. I... Get an opportunity attack on him. Not He's with your, not with that command. You are groveling. Uh, I'm not exactly. sure how long this has been going on, but B1RD is not in the combat initiative. Oh yeah, he was down at the bottom. We'll get, we'll get him back in there. Okay. Um, all right. Then the archer uh, has the spiritual weapon. Here is going to shoot at Crom. Um, where did my? There we go. It so, would be um, two a shots. straight. It would be a straight roll because advantage because I did reckless, but also disadvantage because I'm, I'm prone. prone. Yeah, there you go. That yeah. helps. So thanks, cultist guy. 14. That is a miss. Oof, and an 11. Boy, it's both again. Uh, you happen to put your maul down to the side and both plink, plink, 
right into the side of this and the arch nah, and, like some of them hit my skin but like it's barely even piercing and is going to also run over this way and then with that you hear from above you you hear this as this flying beast appears and hovers right here above bird and birdhouse about 30 feet off the ground as a manticore appears and that was the droppings that you had seen earlier and we are going to take a break here and pick right up with the manticore's turn Dungeon Master Aaron here. Before we continue, I want to take a moment and give credit to the companies and creators that have made this episode possible. First, we would not have a game without the Keepers of Lore at Wizards of the Coast. To learn more about D&D, check out their website at dnd.wizards.com. The beautiful maps are from the Mad Cartographer. Check them out and more of their work on Patreon. Foundry Virtual Tabletop is my favorite virtual tabletop and is featured on our channel. Additionally, this game is hosted through The Forge, which makes setting up Foundry VTT even easier and hosts your games through their servers so your games are always available to your players. The awesome music and sound effects are from Monument Studios, bringing us Hollywood-grade audio to our tabletop narratives. All music and sound effects are from their work and I highly recommend them. Player token art is from Hero Forge, Wizards of the Coast, or the free token maker at thefatefulforce.com. The photos I use for backdrops between combat maps come from pixabay.com, a website with millions of high quality stock images, videos, and music that are all royalty free. Now, let's get back to the adventure and see how the players meet their end. All right, so continuing from back from our break, the manticore has flown down. You see this beast with this hideous humanoid lion type face, the body of a lion, the wings of a dragon, and the tail kind of like a scorpion with these vicious spikes come out the uh, back. It hovers about 30 feet there in front of Birdhouse, uh, up in the air and about 20 feet off to the side. And you just hear it say, Poor decision on your part. Time to fulfill my end of the bargain. And three tail spikes come shooting down at Bird House. So first tail spike. An 18. That misses. Okay, second tail spike. An 8. That'll miss. And That'll a 15. Alright, so all three spikes. And Matrix style, you jump, dodge out of the way as they stick right into the ground at your feet. I will get you next time. As it hovers there in the air, 30 feet up, and that will bring us to Red Streak. All right, does Red Streak notice the cultist coming down the left path? Yes, he does. All right, we're going to move there. 15, 20, 25, 30. Okay. And let me see how far that is. Okay. He is going to use his... He's going to bring out his uh, crossbow. Okay. He's going to fire twice at the cultist in front of him on the path. Okay. Uh, Both of those hit. Reload. (laughs) All right, so you see Red Streak pull out a little crossbow, send off two bolts that strike into the fanatic as he, or the cultist, as he was looking at the giant barbarian uh, coming down on him. And what else are you doing? Uh, I will have uh, Gray Streak get in front of me and end my turn. Okay. That will bring us to B1RD. You look over and you see Birdhouse had just dodged as uh, the giant flying manticore appears to your right-hand side. Rocket boots activated. (laughs) 
Okay. <laughs> Rocket boots. <laughs> so does this give you the effect of the fly spell for a certain amount of time? Is that how it works? Ten minutes. I can fly. I can hover. What's your space what? movement speed? Same as same as my walking okay. speed. Okay. Space movement speed. A hundred rounds. That is. All right. All right, so then I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna match. Ten feet above the magic core. Your movement speed is what thirty? Yes. Okay, so you could only get up if you went straight up. You would be even. So if you want to come diagonal, you're gonna be a little bit below. Okay, well, slightly below for this round, and okay. we'll move up later. Okay, so I'll say you're about 10 feet below, but you've moved diagonal um, down to the south of it. Good. And then we're going to fire off a couple of shots. All right, a 9 is going to miss. A 20 with the eye lasers. A 24. I think that's your first hit with your eye lasers. Hey. For 10? <laughs> Way to go. Damage. All right, so you do 10 points of damage as the first eye lasers shoot a little off behind and hit the canyon wall behind as rocks come tumbling down. Your second one, you just bring them right over and you zap right and punch a hole in one of the wings on the, the manticore. That ends your turn? Yes. All right, Birdhouse. You've got a manticore breathing down your neck and shooting at you. What you doing? Birdhouse stands tall, <laughs> plants his feet in the ground. As he pulls up his arm, the wand comes out again, and he's going to cast Guiding Bolt at third level. Ow! Oh. Ooh, 19. That is a hit. All right, for 22 points of radiant damage. All right, describe it for me. All right, as he comes out and shoots his wand at him, you see a purplish bolt of lightning just... <laughs> I guess it's not lightning. It can be. I'm going to say it is. It just comes out and zings it, and the wings on this beast just start to simmer and cook on the ends as it feels this heat just kind of cook it. It's not used to it. And you see that there's now visible damage uh, on the manticore. It's got the holes in the, a couple more holes in the wings. The uh, fur is fried. There's a little bit of a burnt spot on its chest as it. Ah, I'm going to destroy you. And you stand there? Yeah, I'm going to bang my metal as I just stand there banging my metal, staring at this <laughs> thing as my turn ends. <laughs> All right. Back to. Crom, you are prone and you are groveling. That ended though, right? Uh, that ends when you get up, son. The closest I hit wasn't the one that got that spell. Oh, and right? my spiritual weapon, I still get a movement yep. with that, correct? It That's was the coldest you hit. Oh, yes, I'm spell. sorry, yes, you still do have. All right, I'm gonna move it 15 feet this way because I. Well, I, I can't see anymore. Oh, I that's fair. That's fair. Let me add some vision to this guy. Uh, so while you're doing that, so, Krom, it, this is your first turn under the effect of the spell. So you still have to spend your turn groveling. What? Aaron, it's not letting me I can get vision. Uh, let me... Even with what I have adjusted. Okay. That's because he does not have vision. There we go. All right. <laughs> that was my mistake. Okay. He's going to move five feet more this way, okay. and he's just going to stare at this archer very much. Oh, okay, I guess. As, then, yeah, as then. angry as a war hammer can stare. Okay. <laughs> the the hovering hammer, is maybe it's it's spinning in yeah, yeah. Uh, aggressiveness. Very intimidatingly. All right. Yeah. All right, Krom, you're groveling. Yeah. But at the end of your turn, you're no longer groveling. But there you go. All right, it's now the, the cultist's turn, seeing you break... Uh, the spell and get up, seeing you oh, as can the. Can I get up? Can I get up? No, no, no. You On your next rage. turn, you can get up. You're you're just starting to. I, I unless I get hit, I might. Right. Uh, so seeing as things aren't going <laughs> that well, uh, it is going to. It's going to look at you, Crom, and it is going to cast inflict wounds. That's uh, a that's a melee. Yes, it is. So it is not going to do that. Um, instead, seeing as there's still uh, problems, it's going to do a hold person on you, as seen as that worked the first time, or at least the similar type of spell. 
So make another wisdom save. And you are now held in your groveling position. <laughs> Dang it. Dang. Dang wisdom saves. Is this the one that's casting that spell on him? Yeah, the one you hit with the uh, the crossbow bolt. Okay. All right, let me... Or my concentration is, we'll just use that symbol. Okay, that is its turn as it's going to kind of back up here and look at being cornered. Uh, the archer... The archer seeing Krom being held. Uh, actually, you're down on your feet. Uh, she's going to launch at J, uh, Graystreak because uh, she hasn't had no luck in hitting Krom so far. Yeah, four, zero for four. All right, so two shots at Graystreak. A nine? <laughs> Jeez. And a 22. Uh, All right, and she's going to use her archer's eye on that hit to make it a 21 damage. Add an extra D10. Oof. 21 damage. Actually, you know what? Ouch. Never mind. That's a bonus action that she'd have to use before, so we'll stick with the 11. Okay, so just yeah, 11. Just the 11. Okay. So you got your lucky. As an I arrow take the sticking arrow out of it. You must be better. Go. All right. The Manticore seeing B1RD come up next to it here um, and strike it. It is going to fly down to you to get into melee so go down 10 feet and over five and it is going to use its bite and claw attacks it gets three of those so first a 15 for a bite he's biting me yes 15 is a hit all right you take 10 piercing damage from the bite then it's going to do two claw attacks against you a 23 for 7, and then a miss and 8 for the second one. So you take a total of 17 in that round. As the manticore bites at you and claws, and you start to get into this uh, mid-air tumble of claws and robot fighting. Red Streak, your turn. Okay. Can't see the manticore, uh, so I'm going to focus my attention again on the cultists. Okay. Uh, we're going to move closer. 5, 10, 15, 20. I'm going to use the axe and uh, throw it at this here cultist. Okay. 24 is a hit. Hits him, comes back, throws it again. Oof. And that is also a hit. And he is still alive, but he needs to make uh, some concentration checks here. Uh, yeah, both of them are going to be DC 10. Break the concentration, free crom. And uh, wisdom, or right? Con um, constitution. Constitution, that's right. Okay. Thank you. Oh, and on the first one, he drops the hold person on crom. I'll have a question come my turn for rage, okay. but I'm good. Okay. I think it ends. I'm, I think it's ended. I'm not sure. It's the end of your next turn. Oh, that's that's what I'm reading. It's very common. Yeah, we'll, it's, we'll the, we'll it's the end that. of your next turn. No, okay, so I've, I, I've already thought about it before. It's, yeah, I've been, I've been thinking it through. Yeah, I, you're, you're the good. resident. You're able to go like one here. turn. Yeah. Not, yeah. All right, Gray Streak's good. going? That's what I was Yeah, thinking. and as a bonus action, uh, Red Streak will command Gray Streak to attack. Hit him! That'll do it. Oh. And with that, he dies. As tell tell me how Gray Streak ended that cultist. Uh, he he like he punches through his heart in a very mechanical motion and comes back. And says this organism has ceased to exist. Let us continue. He does he say? Attention. Tell me he says Kalima. He does not know what oh. that means. Okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think Manny knows what that means. Okay. I don't know what that means. Oh, what? We'll have, to, we'll have to discuss that oh, later. Oh, man, we got to educate these guys outside of game. <laughs> All right. Uh, he looks at the, the archer, but he has no more movement. So right. that's my turn. B1RD, you are entangled in melee with the manticore 20 feet above the ground. We're entangled? Well, you're in melee. He just bit, <laughs> he just bit you and clawed you. I know. It's I just, thought about it's that just it's just flavor text. Yeah, it's well, just some entanglement. Okay. Uh, since he got close, we get. Uh, 
cautious. I guess. The proper term. Okay. And so we're going to fire off with arms of Badar. He needs to make a DC 14 strike save. Alrighty. He rolls a 12. Okay, so he fails, so he takes 14 necrotic damage and he can't make any reactions until his next turn. Okay, so that was your action. Um, are you moving away or what you doing? There. Alright, are you still at the same elevation? I'm gonna elevate 10 more feet. Elevate. All right, so Birdhouse, as you look up and you watch this, you see just kind of appearing out of midair these black spaghetti-like tendrils just wrap around this manticore, and the dark energy just pulses inside as the manticore Aah! and is so distracted that uh, B1RD is able to uh, fly back and create some distance safely. Does that end your turn? It does. All right, Birdhouse, what you doing? Birdhouse is going to cock his arm back again and pull up his wand. And as he does, he's going to shoot out the same bolt uh, that is guided. But uh, this time it's not going to be as strong as it has been. The same bolt that is guided. <laughs> I love that. Jesus. Not as strong. All right, an 18. That's a, that's a solid roll. I yes, think that was stronger than the last one. <laughs> All right, Birdhouse. level two. That is going to end him. How does that? How does it do it? Oh! As it hits his face, as he's turning and looking towards B1RD, his wings just start to sear up. There's, uh, yeah, they sear up as his tail just starts to melt and bit by bit as it just turns into embers and ashes, and uh, the wind takes it away off the top of this mountain as you just see the manticore disappear into nothingness. All right, and as it does for a moment, the searing, it actually the smell of deliciousness uh, fills the air until it gets to that burnt point, and then... <laughs> All right, you still have movement and a bonus action. All right, I'm going to come up here. Um, see what's going on with my friends. Okay, so you walk up closer to the cavern, uh, seeing Krom down on the ground, and the yep. weapon and the archer is all that's left backed up in a corner on the wall. Get up, Krom! <laughs> and then I'm gonna pull my spirit weapon over here towards the archer and make one attack at it. Okay. Eleven is going to miss as it just yeah, slams God. right into the wall as she ducks. Sorry, still getting used to this thing. And <laughs> that'll be my turn. Krom, you're up. Krom gets up, have his movement. He smells delicious cooked meats in the distance, thinking of food. But then the rage glazes back over his eyes as he fixates on this archer. So, question DM. Okay. Half movement, I have 35 feet. Okay. I'm at 17. How how are we ruling this? Do you like round so up the, and I get the 35 would have rounded down on the first calculation. So 15. 15, so you still have another 15. Dang. Dang. But you're, but you're large. You don't have like 10 foot reach or something? Nah, it doesn't give me reach, unfortunately. Okay. 5, 10. 15. Um Throw it. Throw That's it. actually, honestly, I'm. Not, it's not going to be good because it's a mall. But can I like overhand throw my mall at this lady? Sure. At this archer. Okay. How how would you like me to roll for this? Is Do a a ranged attack with your strength modifier, but no proficiency since you probably didn't train throwing your mall. Definitely didn't. Okay. okay so I want to do it recklessly too. So okay get advantage oh, um, so sounds good so strength mod plus so just just your strength mod just my strength mod okay so let's roll 2d20s 
I am. <laughs> I'm like, why can't I think right now? Math. Basically, um, oh, now those are gonna hit. So, 12 plus 4 for 16. 16 is exactly what you needed. Yes! <laughs> um, so, I'm, so I'm gonna roll. Don't take the uh, to hit, just take the damage on this, but it's just gonna be with the enraged one. So basically, as he gets it and he can't go any further, he just swings it back and then launches two handed throw this small at her. It just whooshes okay. at her body. And you know what? Since, we'll, we'll add it, make it a little falling damage since you're putting some extra force behind it, so add an extra d6. An extra d6 on top of the... Next. <laughs> Their head yep. hits the wall or something. <laughs> so, right, <laughs> dead already. so right now it's 19 bludgeoning damage. Okay. So another d6 on top. Let's get the 6. Another 3. So three. 22 points of bludgeoning damage against the archer. Okay. As the, and as the mole just thuds with a heavy thud on the ground. <laughs> Alright. And then it's a free action... Ah, oh, yeah, no, I'm good. All right. That, that will be Krom's turn. All right, it is now the archer's turn. Uh, seeing all of these people coming up on her here. I can't. I can't give up. I must. I must. I'm dead either way. Here you go. And uh, she's seeing you without a weapon is going to fire at you, Krom. Uh, she's going to use her archer's eye to try and gain an extra seven if she hits here. A 15. That's exactly what she needed to hit. All right, so it's <laughs> six damage. So seven plus six, 13 piercing damage. Taking half from both. And then a regular attack for the second shot is an 11, which will miss. So to the six. Oh, let me, let me do it. There we go. Okay, I'm good. And right. the 11. She takes... so, I can't... so one arrow hits me in the chest, the other one I just grab and break in my hand. And you see her, her chest heaving as she's drawing more uh, more arrows and says, I... It's my time to die. He will not let me live. Neither will you. And that brings us to Red Streak. All right, Red Streak's going to run up. He's going to say... What, do you expect us to have pity on you? Chuck's axe. <laughs> 24 Screw hits. You. Calls it back. Chuck's it again. 20. That also hits. Dang, dude. You're just killing it. Calls it back. Great streak. Yes, master. 15. That is going to miss. Oh. Oh, um go back you had advantage on your attacks if you want to roll that second one to see if you hit me it's up to you okay we'll do that after um, red streak finishes um, and actually turn. red streak you got your kobold ability for pack tactics the spiritual weapons right next to her so you can roll that last one with advantage oh would that count for the steel defender i i yeah i oh oh the steel defender that's right um probably not then so yeah you're right but your other attacks, you're good. So, okay. So, Crom, yeah. uh, another D20 on you. Yeah, for that seven damage. See if that hits. Okay, I'll just do the damage here. So, it, nope, that was a ten. Okay, cool. Okay. B1 RD. All the action is way far away from you, but you could fly over the trees. And if you want to do that, Active. let me know because I'll have to drag you through the walls. Activate turbo booster. I did good. I think that's as far as we can get. Okay. And you're 30 feet up, so you, you can view over everybody and you can see that archer backed up against the wall. Okay, action complete. All right. Birdhouse. All right, Birdhouse, noticing that all the action is going up, kind of north uh, west of them, of him. He's going to come charging up here, and as he does... He, seeing this archer up here surrounded by enemies is going to catch so you cannot with Krom in the way and there being a ledge there you cannot see her you big old guy you <laughs> I'm chonky right now how many? How much feet would it cost me to move up 10 feet uh, I'd say yeah I, well, 15 to get up there because it, it's about Darn. an 8 to 9 foot there I can't then 
You got your spiritual weapon though, still, so that's nice. Yeah. So you're saying I can't attack if I? Can I attempt to cast a spell? I mean, I have the reach for it, but would it just? It depends on what it AC says for or? the target. Well, I was thinking Sacred Flame. I think you have to see the target for that. I can't see it. No. My juicy buttocks. I got GPS way. going off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like a little antenna comes up. <laughs> all right, all right. Then um, I'm just gonna cast. Come back here five feet, and I will cast guidance on bird. Do you have to be able to touch for that? Yeah, he's that's why th I... he's thirty feet in the air. Oh well. So you can use. Then I guess I would just stand here and say. You can use your action to dash, and then you could get up there. Damn, but I can't do much. Okay, all right. Oh, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna come right up here next to you. Crom, pick me up. Pick me up, Aaron. Oh, I got you. <laughs> Lift me. Okay. Lift me. All right. And I will uh, hopefully finish the job with my spiritual work. Okay. As it's still spinning, <laughs> trying to be intimidating. It's going to attempt to come down right on this thing's head. Ooh. And spinning a little too fast. Boom, it slams the ground right next to her. <laughs> and that'll be my turn. All right, Chrome, you're up. Chrome's just going to take one big step towards her and then pick up his hammer. And then as he looks at her, he's just going to be like, for the bunnies. And smash her into bits. Okay. Hopefully. Oh. 27 to hit. That hits. 16 bludgeoning. Okay, she's still up. So wow. It's family friendly style. <laughs> family friendly on the language. <laughs> and then a and then 19 to hit oh for another goodness. 17 points of Whew. bludgeoning damage. All right, how do you want to end her? Um, <laughs> yeah, actually, that's a good point. The Gallagher thing was okay, right? For yeah. for a viewing, okay, for a viewing audience. <laughs> Uh, so as he says, for the rabbits, he he like does like an uppercut right into the gut, launching her in the air. And as he does, he's just gonna throw his maul over his shoulder and just like a fly against the wall, swat her into it, and just <laughs> as she does, just stumps to the ground, leaving behind like a little a red streak on the wall behind her. As she All slides right. down the red the mountainside. So you see Brom just stomp over, reach up, pick up his maul again, and in two swipes, nails that and ends the fight right there. All right, you are now out of combat. As you have defeated everything near you. So, what would you like to do now? There is a cavern you, but... right over here. Uh, I'm going to use Mending on Grey Streak and... Get him up back to full health. Uh, I'm not really beat up, but um, my powers don't really seem to be as good as they are. I could definitely use a charge. Push forward. All right. Short. Before you we do, you require improvements. No, before we do, though, I would like to tools. on you, on my friends here, like to cast this. Come, come, where are you? Don't use all your spells. I mean, do your thing, but like, oh, I know this is a good one, though, that will help everybody here. So, if it would roll, but it did not. <laughs> Why didn't it roll? What the heck? What the Buchenhugen? This is what I'm trying to cast, but it should be at third level, so you get 10 healing. You get 10 healing, so you get 10 HP, added to your maximum, and you get 10 health, just right now. 10 added to maximum HP? Okay. And 10 health, Right. It says. How much? How many people does this affect? Oh, all of the creatures. Nice. That's sick. But it was All at right. third level, so I think it might be one more. So yeah, a, a, a third level or higher, a target set points decreases by an oh no five. Oh, okay. So what is you give it right. to? All three of you. So Y'all oh, get okay. ten maximum to your health as well as ten HP. Oof! I am stacked. Yeah. For eight man. hours. 
Yeah. I, I, I still have I still have this giant form for another f four base for four still basically. Right, and then Krom's gonna get at the um uh, mouth of the cave and look in. I'm touching myself and getting myself. All right, you look in and uh, appears to be a normal cave. Uh, nothing extra to see. I'm not gonna make you roll for uh, the entrance there, but yeah, I have uh, 300 feet of dark vision too. So like, okay. Yeah, uh, from from the um, eyes of night ability. All right, so you taking the lead then? Oh yeah, we all have that currently. All right, so you enter into this cave area. Uh, you walk about 50 yards, and the light is about di uh, dim as some of the non-direct sunlight from the opening works its way inside. And about 50 uh, feet in, or sorry, 50 yards in, you come to the first uh, any uh, something of note and at the edge of this light you see there are eight sconces along the length of the tunnel and right in front of you there's a basket with eight unlit torches lying inside i want to pull out my wand of secrets and see if there's anything within 30 feet of me uh any secret doors or traps within okay. 30 feet of me all right. Can you link I that for like me? I would like to cast. Yeah. I'm gonna do uh, magic awareness again. As Are well. you all doing this at the same time, or do you want to wait for Red Streak? Actually, no. Yeah, do your thing, Red Streak. I'm gonna hold it up. Uh, I'll let Red Streak do his thing, but I still want to do. I'll do magic awareness next. Okay. Uh, so Red Streak, as you point this wand out, uh, you see on the floor between these eight sconces is a magical rune covering this ten foot wide hallway. Mm -hmm. Um, it kind of glows with this dark purplish color. And then interspersed randomly in this rune are these little holes about three inches wide uh, that appear all over. And then after about ten seconds, that then fades as the magic of the wand retreats. Seems to be uh, some sort of trap here in this hallway or in this passage. Does anyone know how to deactivate them? Right over there. Hmm. I don't, but um, I can guide one of you if one of you is good at it. I'm going to take a hand axe out and just toss it where I saw the symbol. Okay. Uh, you do so and clang, 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 clang. Nothing happens. Great streak. Guess master. And Great streak will go step on the rune. <laughs> Okay, he takes a step, he gets up to the edge, and as he steps on the rune, he takes another step, and another step, and he makes it to the hatchet that Krom had thrown, and kind of looks back at you as nothing happens. <laughs> oh boy. Um, in many of the, the ancient temples and ruins that I have studied throughout the centuries, such magical traps often only react to intrusion of a biological nature. So then you go. Well, I was thinking birdhouse perhaps would be the next one to go across. Cromwell gingerly like stick his leg out and like start tapping his foot like around like the edge of the room to see if anything happens. I'm gonna walk into the room as okay. birdhouse. So, uh. Krom, you, you stick your foot out onto the edge of the rune, and Birdhouse walks by you. Nothing happens. I start following suit. I'm gonna open the door. There's no door. I thought, <laughs> I thought, I thought we were standing outside walks, of the door. We're in a hallway, no, in a hallway. standing outside these rooms. He walks across the room. <laughs> so we just walk for an imaginary doorknob, <laughs> twists it, and opens it up. And just All right. his so we're just making our way down this hallway, then. I'm just going to continue walking okay. down this hallway. Is there any way for me to try and deactivate that rune? I don't really have any abilities for that. I um, do. You would have to do an arcana check. Yeah, I, I want to look at it, because that didn't look nice. <laughs> no, this room must be faulty or something. Gonna... Before you do that, I'm going to reach out and touch you, and I'm going to help guide you with that. Useful with a little bit preaching. of guidance. Guidance gives advantage on the roll? It gives a d4 to ability checks. Okay. 
Ugh. 14. Oh, we're and D4. Then, well, you gotta, yeah, you gotta, you gotta roll a D4. My bad. I already rolled as bad as it is. 12. So 12. Uh, you realize there's some kind of trigger that triggers whatever this is, and obviously you guys haven't activated that trigger yet, but you're not quite sure. Uh, but you do know that if, if you'd had a little bit better understanding of the magic, you might be able to deactivate it, or you know there's a spell called Dispel Magic that some yeah. wizards have yeah. that would be able to deal with it. Hmm. If only, we are, if only we had someone in the group that if we are had by, such an ability. If we are walking by it and nothing happened, we are good. So, Krom, what are you doing? I'm, I'm, we move forward. All right, Krom, you step into the area and nothing happens. You make it. Oh to yeah, the I, I just already walked. Could, uh, okay, yeah. I could just spell it, but. Red streak, you going in? Do you uh, want me to? No. I'm still. So weary about that so i'm i'm gonna cast uh you know what you know what no i i'll, I'll walk i'll walk across okay and birdhouse you're the last one what are you doing so i'm not dispelling oh no wait i'm sorry yeah you walk through and open an imaginary door <laughs> right. I, will, I will follow the, the, the small fellow you all make it through without setting off whatever the trigger was so you continue walking uh, you go about another hundred yards, and you see the tunnel now comes to an ending point. It abruptly ends at a large stone door, uh, and you can see above a smaller tunnel ascends straight up where you can feel a slight breeze uh, coming through. There's the door I was reaching for. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you see, and I'm sorry, not a stone door, a metal door. Uh, that appears to be placed into the stone here with a circular handle in the middle. I'm gonna... <sighs> Sorry, excuse me. Um, so this was a tunnel and this is elevated above us or this door is right in front of us? The door is right in front of you. Straight above you is a smaller kind of uh, tunnel that appears to be either ventilation um, or something else. And so the, the tunnel okay. continues upwards, but there's a door directly in front of you on your level. I'm going to do magic awareness again Okay. for the second time. I didn't do it before because once I saw the room, I was like, ah, that's probably the best I'm going to get. Um, and I thought, uh, we saw something there. We'll see what happens. So I'm going to use magic awareness again. Okay. And do I see any type of, once again, my, ta my like, um, tattoos and markings on my body glow a vibrant blue or more vibrant than it already is. Um, do I see any magical items or spells in the area that's not behind total cover? You do not. Okay. I look at the robot and I kind of push it towards the door. Open. The, open the door. My robot? Please. Doesn't listen to you. Oh, I, I, you open I, the door. grab the wheel and I start twisting. Okay, you grab the wheel and you twist and you feel a kk, and then above you, the there a netting releases and rocks tumble down on all of you. I need all of you to make dexterity saving throws. I knew it! <laughs> um, uh, danger sense, I can see this, correct? Yes. So, advantage. I need I need advantage. So let me roll one more time. Oh, it's worse. Okay, I got a five. All right. Wow, the uh, highest roll was a thirteen. Man, you guys are rolling oof. terrible today. All right. Based upon based upon the accepted learning curve, uh, the highest roll should automatically pass. <laughs> Negative. You take all of you take six bludgeoning damage as uh, rocks about the size of grapefruits come tumbling down on you. So everybody takes six bludgeoning damage, and Krom, as you continue to turn, you hit, you feel that whatever the latch was that released triggered that trap, and then it stopped. So it appears to be locked. Can I try to break the lock? <laughs> Just like keep twisting till it breaks. Yeah, make a strength check. 
cool. So I have advantage with this because I am enlarged. Okay. <laughs> How long are you enlarged for? Four hours. Good. That's wild. If if states of enlargement last more than four hours, please go consult your <laughs> local physician. Um, so a 17 and a 14. So 17. 17. All right. You muscle into this crank and it turns and ugh, it's stuck. Locked. Muscle the crank harder. I believe it is locked. I can't do the accent with that with the deep voice. <laughs> he's just gonna be comp he's just gonna be gruff. Uh, would I be able to use thieves' tools on it? Sure. Perhaps try to unlock it some you can. other way. Are you proficient in thieves' tools? I have them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have them. I mean, you should be. If you have them, I believe that means you're proficient. Uh, not not necessarily. Well, I mean, if it's from your background, is what I'm saying. Like, if it's from right. your background, artificers probably. get like a crap ton, crap. So, is that okay to say? Sure. Okay. You better write again. him down in a little timer. <laughs> you better write him down the square jar. <laughs> um, artificers get a lot of um, tool proficiencies. It's insane. Uh, then I find like... many. Yeah. Uh, tools, thieves' tools. You are proficient. So, you can roll a d20. You're going to add your dex modifier and your proficiency bonus. Oh, I think you also get something at 6th level, Manny. Three. But I'm not a rogue. No, no, no. You should, um... It, it's, it's an artificer thing. It should, it should be called not right tool for the job. It might be called right tool for the job. Maybe something yeah, different. right tools for the job. But that just lets me create the tools yeah. I need. Yeah, you can others. just create it. No, there's something. There's there's something else. I promise. <laughs> okay. Maybe. Third level. Two, tool expertise. Exactly what you need. That's what it is. Tool expertise. You can add double your proficiency. Your double your proficiency bonus too. Ooh, that's oh, nice. Oh, you can add so six. So right. Right. Plus, well, you did that, but you chose Smith's tools. Ah, okay. Oh, nice. So I still have a plus six. I still have a plus six. Proficiency yeah. is bonus is doubled for any ability check that you make that uses your proficiency with a tool. It's just any tool, not just one. Is Aaron frozen? Nope, I'm no. reading. He's thinking. <laughs> yeah, because either it's a plus six or it's a plus nine. So you're, so you're talking about tool proficiency, right? Perhaps you should just roll a natural 20 and end this discussion. Sure, let's roll and see if there, the difference between the six and the nine will work. So that, okay. um, uh, what I just linked is what I was talking about. Ball, don't lie. All right. So that's what you needed. Okay, so you make it, uh, you put in your thieves tools and you tinker around a little bit and after a moment, you feel the, la the latch release and the door slightly uh, is ajar. Look over my shoulder. Mm -hmm. See, see, I, I have capabilities too, which I can use to make improvements on you, robots again. And as you again. speak, Improve you hear from down the hall uh, beyond the door. Welcome to my lair. Please enter and present your tribute. Of course, of course. I brought our tribute. Yes. I I still look at Red Streak. Improve me. Perhaps for a fee. All right, you guys proceeding forward? Yes. Yeah. All right, you yeah. proceed forward, and another 20 feet, the tunnel abruptly ends to a large hole in the floor uh, that you see is then about a 15-foot drop down to a flat area. And from here, it is cold. You get this wave of cold air uh, as you get closer to this hole. Does it just make my metal cold? <laughs> Why do you have to say it like that? Sure. <laughs> I feel like it would just, just make what me What you guys chilly. doing? I'm going to drop down the hole. All right. Make me an athletics or acrobatics check. Your choice. And every, every, every everybody can do this if you're not going to fly or do something else. I'll, I'll do it. I'll do an, I'll do an acrobatics. Actually, is it dark in here? It is pitch black. So you're using your dark vision and you see in shades mm, of gray. Well, there's um, something else I'm going to do now. 
I'm doing spider climb again on Gurry Streak, and uh, he's going to carry me down. Okay. I would like to use this to fly down. All right, so you're going to fly down, just you? Using steps tonight. Would any of you like to come with me? I shall accompany you. Fancy. I jump. <laughs> Your ac acrobatics check. Yeah. Yeah. Where was that before with all those wisdom saves? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So 24. All right. Everybody expertly flies down or makes it down into this cavern. Everyone's graceful. And I just. All right. As you do. Does the steel defender also have um, dark vision out to 300? Uh, it was only up to three creatures. Okay. So or he doesn't. Me but I can guide him. So. All right. You drop down on a ledge, and it is covered in ice. Down below you, at about a ten-foot drop onto a frozen sheet of ice, uh, goes off another ten feet to a, another ledge that is uh, ten feet above to another platform. The cavern appears to be divided slightly into two sides. On the left, to your left, uh, you see there are two more of these cultist char characters standing before a 15-foot ledge. Atop perched is a large white dragon sitting there and staring at you as you enter. The cultists turn and stand in silence sitting at you. Off to the right-hand side, you can see in your dark vision the... Uh, steps going off to the right off into a uh, kind of a stepped area and you can see to the back that it doesn't uh, go endlessly as you stand there the dragon sits up on its hind legs what tribute have you brought to me i take out my my wand of, of uh wand of secrets I bow down and I bow down. Oh, great dragon. Here is the tribute. Excellent. You may be one of the ones that leaves this place alive. The rest of you, you've obviously heard of my power and my claiming of this territory. So, what do you offer to attempt to leave my lair alive? I pull out a crusty piece of chainmail armor that has been bashed up, bruised, rusty. I wore it way back in the war. I bring this for you, I promise you. It is, uh, it has been worn by a war hero. Trust me, I know. I met him myself. This, uh, I hope will be a good enough offering for you. Are there any magical properties to it? No, it's just regular chainmail. <laughs> Do you uh, think I cannot tell you offer paltry items to me? All right, it's not your size. I get it. <laughs> the rest of you, what do you offer? Um, I also <clears throat> want to take this time to... I'm going to try to take the infusion off my armor that I have on it right now and put a different infusion on it. I can do that, right, Sam? You can end an, you can end an infusion at will, but uh, place a new infusion, it needs to be at the end of a longer short rest. Um, at the yeah. end of it? Yeah. Yep. Ooh. Okay, never mind. So the infusions you came in with are the ones you've got. Yeah. Dang, because <laughs> I have resistance to fire. I grow <laughs> impatient. I, um, I'm, I'm going to walk forward a bit. May I approach? with caution okay i get right there may i approach further show me what you offer from there i'm gonna just bring out what, 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 what do we got what do we got for this guy so i don't have the potion of growth anymore um i don't think he needs that <laughs> i'm his size this is great um I just like take off my coin purse, gold, and my hammer arms as I offer my services. 
And how about you, mechanical one? In my research and by my experience, I've heard that you're kind of quite fond of dwarves. Something about them being crunchy and, and good with gravy. So we offer you this one. Uh, we brought it specifically because it was the largest one we could find. <laughs> that is amusing. Very well. The large dwarf and the one who offered me paltry items, he will stay as my meals. The other ones, you may choose among you one of you to return to the world below and spread the news of my domain. You have ten seconds to choose which one of you survives. Goodbye, Goodbye. <laughs> So. I'm going to once again cast Steps of Wings or use Steps I, of Wings my, or Steps of Night. And I'm, I'm going to seeing magic being cast. The I'm dragon. Going to, I am going to do a no. standing long jump at that same. Oh, sorry, you do your thing. Sorry. I was That's all right. Do, like at the same time, I was going to do something as well. So as that happens, everybody is ready. So we will enter combat initiative so go ahead and roll initiative to see what order you do these things in oh man i was about to say like as he was doing that i was hoping to do a standing long jump across but, yeah, yeah. He, he knows what's uh what's up he knows what's up <laughs> Why is truck always oh i have a, the bus, hold man? up i have advantage on that due to uh because i cast that vigilant blessing on myself way up there oh. so i will hopefully All right, yeah, B1RD, Birdhouse, Crom, Red Streak. Let me see if I can roll better. Wait. Okay. <laughs> All right, good to go? Yes. All right, so B1RD, you get the first action. What are you doing? Rocket boots activated. Movement. Okay, so coming off of that ledge, you are 10 feet above <clears throat> that ice, unless you want to be higher. The ceilings here are pretty high, probably about 50 feet up. Okay, yeah, right now that will do. And we're going to... Fire on the dragon. All right. All right, eye lasers are ineffective. Eye lasers blast right into the below the dragon into the ledge there. Anything else? That's my turn. All right. The dragon is going to activate the lair and is going to throw out a freezing fog right here amongst all of you. So everybody except B1RD needs to, needs to make a con save for me. Oh, it's only, it's only strength. Uh, can I use guidance on that? Can I use... Uh, only if you'd already cast it before. Okay. That's only for ability checks anyway, my okay. guy. And then Gray Streak 2. So, ah, yes. Those of you that rolled below a 10, take 7 cold damage. Burr. And everything around you is heavily obscured. And you realize ending your turn in here would subject you to more pain. Alright. Seeing combat start, the cultist with the bow and arrow is going to move and scramble up to this ledge and take two shots at B1RD. Uh, is going to use a bonus action to activate Archer's Eye. Which is, is this pets. darkness? Yes. Uh, you, it's darkness and right now you are in you are in heavily obscured area as well. So that... Okay. It's like it in fog. Alright, longbow shot at B1RD. 17? Yeah. All right, with the bonus from Archer's Eye, that's going to be a total of 15 damage. 
And then a second arrow comes your way. 16. Eight. Eight piercing damage from the second arrow as the archer shoots at you. Birdhouse. All right, I'm going to use a bonus action to get vampiric wings going. Not vampiric wings, excuse <laughs> me. Step to nine, that's from last night. <laughs> um, and why it's not letting me. Oh, gosh darn it. it tells me that I have, uh, I'm not attributes, but I still have two things on it. Two uses. Any reason why it wouldn't let me roll that? It's odd. For steps of night? Yeah. I don't know. That was a. Is it a? Well, I get. I get thing? three. I get three. Yeah, I get three per. But it's not letting me roll it anymore. Yeah, that's fine. We we know you. All right, cool. Three, uh, so. Yeah, cool. you're good. All right, so I'm gonna use my ten feet of movement to run up there, just into the distance, because I know that that dragonborn was or that dragon was north of us. And then from oh, there... Oh, I'm hold gonna... on. What's your proficiency bonus? It's three, Plus right? Plus three. Okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you should be good. That's weird. Yeah, I don't, okay. yeah, I don't know why it's going to let me cast it. Okay. And then from there, I'm going to attempt to fly across this ridge. Okay. Once I land there, I am going to shoot a guiding bolt at this dragon okay. uh, at third level. And with that, I have... That's it. That's fine. Oh no! Oh, a ten. All right, you feel you, the energy that you've sent before. This time, oh, it's almost the cold or the darkness just seem to suck it up as the dragon watches you. <laughs> All right, that was cute. That'll be my turn. All right, red streak. Hey. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! You skipped Crom. Uh, how did? Oh, because Birdhouse hit next without me. Never mind, Crom. You're up. Yeah, okay. No problem. Um, Krom is just going to do a standing long jump for now. Jump 10 feet. Right there at the base of the other side. It's going to be down the ravine. And as you hit this ice, it is quite slippery. So make a deck save for me. Okay. Um, would Danger Sense work for this? Mm, nah. It's on a This is more environmental. Yeah, well, it's more environment because I can't see it, but... That's why I asked. No worries. Saving throw. You oh. are good. You you slide a little bit and hold your balance. Excellent. So I have another 25 feet of movement. Um, I'm just going to climb this wall. Okay. And get right there on that cultist. Okay. And then... I'm going to look at him, draw my Great Maul, and then once again in Dwarvish just shout... Kai am ooh, and go into a rage. Okay. That is a four. I'm glad they're all different, so we get to like really see the variations on this. Um, four. Yes. I'm so happy about this one. Okay. Um. So as you see this happen, my hair and the um, tattoos once again become an even darker and more regal shade of blue of a royal blue and my hair becomes that as well as you just see my mall arc with these like kind of like it's been cracked and underneath you just see this light coming through of like arcane blue energy as it slowly fades as Krom takes his mall in one hand and he just flips it and he chucks it at the dragon this particular um rage is i infuse one weapon of my choice that i'm holding okay. and until the rage ends the weapon's damage type changes to force and it gains the light and throne properties all right out to a normal range of 20 feet and a long range of 60. okay so probably not going to do the um so you're doing a ranged attack on the dragon i'll, I'll get back to that um yeah and then so um, that'll the end, be a dis that'll be a disadvantage because you got a guy in melee Ah, okay. Good to know, good to know, good to know. Um, it's still force damage, though, for now. Instead of, like, throwing anything, though, um, it also reappears back in my hand at the end of my turn. Okay. So, 
So I'm not going to throw it yet, but having it in one hand, I'm going to use a free action now to draw a, um, draw one of my hand axes and then dual wield with them. Okay. So I am going to just two attacks with my maul, because I can't bonus, at bonus action anything. Okay. So I'm going to attack this cultist in front of me. Recklessly, obviously. Alrighty. 21 to hit. That'll hit. For 14 points of bludgeoning, and then another tw- uh, 21 to hit for another 20 points of bludgeoning. <laughs> uh, actually, not bludgeoning. Both of those are force. Okay. Now. How do you want to not take him out? <laughs> so basically, as this happens, I just like, I, sw- I like sweep the legs with one full swoop as he kind of like stars in the air, and then with one hand just whack him out of the way, looking at the dragon the whole time. And that'll be, that'll be how I, I wreck them. Okay. Anything else? <laughs> um. No. That that's my turn. That's my bonus action. My action. My movement. I am set. Alrighty. That brings us to Red Streak. All right. Would uh would Redstreak had enough time to see that if he goes right, he'll he, there was more space for him to run to. Um, yeah, you would have I... seen that while the dragon was talking. Question. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually oh, one yep. more thing. Sorry, sorry about that. Um. How much movement do you, would you say I had left after the jump and climbing that ledge? Like how much movement? Um, do you think maybe maybe five out? more feet. Five more? Okay, cool. I'm just gonna move just to the left a little bit. Okay. That's all. Sorry about that. Thank you. Yeah, get that cultist out of here. He's yep. bush. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I'm going to target the archer across that across this. What is it like ice? Yes. Is there a drop? There is. 10 feet down. Oh, oh okay. Bird okay, is so hovering I'm... right at your level, 10 feet above the ice. I see. Okay, so I'm going to target the archer across this little ravine of ice, and I'm going to shoot it with my crossbow. Ooh. Nope, that'll be a miss, an eight. Okay, and I'm going to move Great Streak. And uh, I'm just going to have him pass through me and move over here. Okay. And I end my turn right there. All right. It is now at the end of the initiative order, the dragon's turn. The dragon is going to fly. Um, Let's see. Fly of 80. All right. Going to fly right here. Uh, Birdhouse, you would get an opportunity attack as it flew beside you if you want it. 15 is going to miss. And then the dragon is going to use its cold breath. Right there. So B1RD... And Red Streak and Gray Streak, roll a Constitution saving throw. Uh, I don't know why the number's not there, but you need a 15. Ooh, okay. Uh, let's see. Give me a sec. Red Streak got an 8. B1RD got a 10. All right, and Gray Streak got a 19. So, Gray Streak's going to take half damage. Red Streak and B1RD, you're going to take 49 cold damage. As... I'm going to use uh, Absorb Elements to take half. Okay. All right, so you take 24, and then half that as you get encased by this ice and... The dragon will then finish its movement and land right up here. B1RD, top of round two, what you doing? Coming into the ground. Oh, you uh, lost all your health? I did. Okay, so as that happens, you fall 10 feet so you would take 1d6 of damage, so you already have one failed saving throw. Oh, we already lost the guy. Oh, no. So go ahead and make a second death saving throw. All right. Oh, 
That's two. Yeah. All right, B1RD has two fail to death saves. So you saw the dragon hover across, breathe this cone of cold, and as the ice clears in the uh, those of you that had everyone that has the dark vision, you just see this form <laughs> slam against the ice, and B1RD lies motionless on the ground. The lair action then triggers. This time, there's going to be some ice shards that are going to fall from the ceiling. The dragon is going to target. Red streak and gray streak. So first at gray streak. 26 for 12 Oof. piercing damage. Oof, he's down. Okay, second Goodbye, one at red friend. streak. Critical miss as you dodge out of the way. And third one, crit, tw natural Ooh. 20 for yeah. 15 points of damage as the third uh, icicle strikes down and hits red streak right on the head you now have two party members down the fog cloud disappears as that happened that brings us to the archer the archer seeing that there is a moment here to take out another member is going to loose an arrow at red streak is <laughs> ah. going to activate archer's eye as a bonus action which will add one damage if it hits isn't that an automatic crit because he's down? Uh, I'm... <clears throat> no, no, no. That's not how that works. Red, red Streak's still up. Oh, my bad. I, yeah. I, I, I it's B1RD. I yeah, so, B1RD. So, so does a 16 hit Red Streak? That hits. Okay, 6 damage. Seven. Are you still up? 7 damage, yeah. Alright. Second barely. shot. Oof, 11 yeah, I'm, damage. I'm out. <laughs> oh my god! All right. 32 down. <laughs> Birdhouse, we got this. Birdhouse, you're I would have used I would have used shield, but I already used my reaction for the the cone of cold, shoot. so I had nothing left. Shoot, 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 shoot. All right, um, I'm gonna fly. Birdhouse is gonna fly 30 feet this way. Uh, actually, he's gonna fly 20 feet and then down on the ground. So now he's just down on the ground, and then he is going to cast. <clears throat> Sacred Flame on this archer. Okay. So I need them to make a DC 15. All they right, so they take 12. Roll a 10, so they take 12 radiant damage. Okay. <sighs> That's pretty much all I can do, so I will end my turn there. No bonus action heals or anything? No. Okay, Krom, you're up. Okay. Pretty whack cleric. Something I also just read on the Crusher feet. I can only move if I hit someone. I can only move them five feet once per turn. So that was my bad on the last time. Okay. I don't think it would have changed anything. Yeah, <laughs> I mean he yeah. still was gonna hit it's me. It's good things crit. to know though for future. No, yeah, yeah. Just, just, be, just so I can like call myself out on it before someone else does. So five, ten, <laughs> fifteen. 20, it's fine when you calling people out. Uh, Thirty. Hey, I call myself out too, man. That's just, that's just my thing. I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm gonna way. move right there, and I am going to chuck the maul recklessly at the archer. Okay. Fifteen is a miss as the maul slams right in be behind the ledge of the archer. Dang, I'm gonna throw my axe then. Okay. <laughs> um, with the axe, it's still gonna be strength based when I throw it, or? It's a, is it light finesse? It's yeah, a strength yeah. based weapon. Then it, it, yeah. it, has, it has the light feet, uh, the hand axe adds the hand axe and it's a light yeah. feet, it has the light feature. Yeah, sure, you're you're good. Okay, I just don't know if you want me to use my dex <laughs> anyway. So I will also do that against her. That's uh, better. Twenty two nice. will definitely hit. For nine points, just make okay. sure wait. Which one did I roll? Oh, um, that should be another two on that because I'm raging. So eleven points of slashing. Okay. That that's it. That's my that's my turn. And as you see, the in like a flash of blue, the form of my maul takes place and then solidifies back into my maul. Perfect. In my hand. All right, red streak, make a death saving throw. Aw, oh, baby. 
Ah. All right, one failed save. The dragon's turn. At the beginning of its turn, we'll see if its ice breath recharges. That's for Gray Streak. Oh, great! Gray Streak gets the same uh, saving throws as a PC. I think oh, Gray Streak. Uh, Gray well. Streak. Once he's broken, he's broken. Yeah, I think, oh, he's he, broken? I think he's like an NPC. <laughs> you can repair My him. With baby. A, you can repair him with a spell slot, but it takes him a minute to get back to get back up. All right. So okay. The breath weapon does not uh, reactivate, so you guys are good there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. No. The dragon is now going to fly down here and attack a birdhouse with uh, a bite and two claws. Critical miss for the bite. Two claw attacks. An 18. That misses. misses? That, yep, that misses. And a 15. That misses. All right. Dang, someone's got an AC. And is then going to come back up here to the ledge. I'm actually going to fly up here, so you'll get an opportunity attack as it flies away. Okay. Can I use cantrips on that? Or spells? Only if you have Warcaster. Uh, Warcaster, okay. All right, I wasn't sure if there was some sort of special conundrum to it. Right. Does a 19 hit, though? A 19 does hit. Oh, as the dragon flies away, you just see him... That's right, get back on the ledge. You drew I'm blood. coming for you. I'm coming for All you. Alright, B1 RD. That saving throw, let's see it. I just don't want to be the first to die in this in this <laughs> session. That's all. That's my goal. Ooh, one success. Alright, we're still up. Alright. For the lair action. The dragon this time is going to do. Um, yeah, we're going to do a wall of ice and he's going to separate the ones that are down from the ones that are up. So their wall of ice pops up, uh, on the ice between birdhouse Cr and Crom stone fist and the rest of the party B1 RD and red streak, uh, putting a layer or a barrier there. The archer's turn. The archer's going to lean over here and shoot at Birdhouse. It's going to use the last archer's eye bonus action. We'll add nine if this attack hits. An 18. That does not hit. All right. Second attack normal. Ooh, another 18. Two arrows fly through and just hit right at your feet as the archer then is going to back up and take a little cover from there and then birdhouse it is your turn all right birdhouse is going to fly up about 20 feet now because he's still flying he's got a minute of that so from there he's gonna get like 10 feet in the air so that ledge is not imposing him okay and he's gonna pull out his wand as you see him load it up again and he is gonna cast his last second level spell use a guiding bolt to Attack him at second level. Guiding Bull's just been your bread and butter tonight. Well, I realized I didn't choose some of my spells as properly as I should have. <laughs> 19 is a hit. All right. As you see, the energy just come up and it encompasses the whole white of the room. Just all the snow and ice just becomes a purpley glow as it vroom, and just hits this dragon. I told you I was coming for you. And that'll be my turn. How dare you? You are the next to die. Krom, what you doing? Krom is going to move 10 feet to get right up to the wall and start climbing it. How much? To get right, right here. So those like are only right. about 5 feet up, so 10 to get there, another 10 to get up there. So, so 20, you're at so 20. Another, so another 15. So one, two, three. There, I am going to. As I go, as I go by, um, can I pick up the the axe I threw? Yeah, that's yeah, no problem. Okay, I'm gonna pick that up, and I am going to reckless. I'm gonna kind of hug the wall too, so like I like the dragon can't really see me, and I'm gonna hug the wall and. That's a five foot ledge. The dragon can see you. True, I'm big. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. 
It's okay, I want him to hit me. Not really. Um, I am going to hit the archer. Um, actually. Oh, he's within range! I am going to throw um, my maul at the dragon. Okay. Um, with advantage because of the guiding bolt, correct? Okay, yep. And then, yeah. So I'm going to throw my maul. Ooh. Eleven. Two oh. threes. That's a That's miss. That's rough. That is rough. And then I am going to throw my hand axe again at the archer recklessly. Okay. okay. You'll have to add two to this. But I hit with that, so another yep. eleven. Yeah. Natural nineteen for twenty-six. Yeah. So yeah, nine yeah, damage as you hit there. Okay. Plus another two. For rage, for okay. some reason that's not showing up. No problem. But um, so eleven points of slashing damage to the archer, and yeah, that's that's my turn. All right, the maul slams against the ledge below the dragon. You then chuck your hand axe at the archer, strikes into it. And at the end of your turn, they both appear back in your hands. Just, just the maul, Bob. Just no, the maul. Okay. Bob, yeah. The maul appears back in your hands as you look a little frustrated. All right, red streak, death saving throw. Got Let's this. Go. Got this. Don't be the first. Let's go. Not 20. Not oh 20. God, if you're not 20. No! <laughs> <laughs> a 7 is a fail. All right, what are you at now? Two fails. Two fails? All right, any yeah. successes? No. No, just B1RD had the success. All right. So, B, so B1RD and you were both at two. This... All right, our white dragon now. It is their turn. Let's see if the, the light breath on. recharges. Oh. Ooh, the breath recharges. And you know what? It's going to stay right there. And that will... Both of you need to make con saves. Yeah, does my rage... Oh, just straight. Okay. Okay, so Birdhouse fails with a 10. Krom? Oh, yeah. Get in there for you. Okay. That's the first damage I have taken all night. Ooh, and also a 10. 10. All right, both I of all... you take 40 cold damage, minus uh... any uh, raging issues you have. Nah, I don't. I don't get. I don't okay. block this out, unfortunately. All right. And the dragon seeing you come at it is going to fly up above you to avoid getting any opportunity attacks. It is going to hover. Right here. And round four, B1RD. Two fails, one success. Make your death save. Nat 20, nat 20, nat 20, nat 20. Nat 20. Is that just going to be our catchphrase? All <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, there's a 13. All right. Next roll. Two Bring us two. to it. All right. Layer action. Um, We are going to do... The ice wall disappears, and icicles fall from the ceiling again. This one at first is going to be at Birdhouse. Ooh, a crit for 20 oh, that, damage. That drops me. All right, next one at Krom. Bring it. A critical miss. All right. Now, would this get advantage on me because they attacked recklessly? Uh, no. All attacks oh. against you. Is it all attacks? It's all attacks. Okay. That's why I brought it up. Let me roll another d20 then. Do it then. If you crit. That's a two. All right. <laughs> Even worse. Nice. All right. So then the thir third icicle, a 19 for eight piercing damage. Fair enough. That is the end of the layer action. All right. Um, Birdhouse, you're down, butt. right? Yeah, in two turns. Okay. Uh, you're still Drop showing. Me. You're still showing up on the tokens if you want to add your oh, damage there. Bad. Yeah. All right, the archer is going to lose two arrows at Krom. Bring it. Advantage. Oh, advantage. Thank you. Uh, that is a 12. 12. Does not hit. That and then hit. a second shot. 19. That'll hit. For nine damage. And is going to scramble up here to the next ledge to get away from you there. So you are now... Uh, distantly flanked by the dragon and the archer. Makes sense. Birdhouse, death save. Got How do I do this? Just, Just roll, roll a d20. d20. Yeah. <laughs> okay. click, on click on death saves on your character sheet. 
I was looking for that. I didn't. Oh, oh it's there. Wondering where it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think so you're unconscious. Window. I think you have to go back to your normal voice now. Oh, it, it's 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 right underneath. Um, it's right on. Yeah, you know where it One is. One failed Ooh. save from Birdhouse. So close to. All right, Crom, uh, you're up. Oh, I thought he rolled a one or something. Um, um, bonus action. I'm gonna chug a potion. Okay. Of greater healing. Okay. Are we using your modified rules for that or no? Nope. Straight... Raw. Raw. Sorry, I keep asking that. That's right. I'm used to it. So 44 plus four. Oh, oh cool. Yeah, rolls bad. for me. Not 17 bad at all. healing. Not there bad at all. Yeah. Heck yeah. And then this dragon, DM, how high is it hovering? Like, at, is it hovering like base with that ledge or is it hovering a little above? No, like it's how... above. I would say it's about 25 feet. Okay, so, if so I got it is 25 feet from the ice, 15 feet from that first ledge. Okay. So I wouldn't be able... So if I go. It would 10... be just out of your range. If you had a reach okay. weapon, you'd be okay. Yeah, but I, but I can't. I was like thinking, like, with the height. That is okay. I am going to. Five, ten. Um, yeah, I'm going to get up on the wall and get up to the archer and knock out his friend. I'm tired of these pesky arrows dinging me. <laughs> Can you move me up there? Ah, uh, yes. Thank you, thank you. Five, ten. So that's 20 feet of movement. Okay. And I'm going to attack twice recklessly. All righty. There we go. 16 points of bludgeon of uh, force 23, damage. 23, 16 points of damage. Okay, good. Archer's still up. And another. 27 for 19 points of damage. Oh, Both damage. solid yeah. hits. Archer is still barely alive. Dang it. And that, that'll that be Chrome's turn. All right, red streak. Death save. Uh... Oh my god, my <laughs> boy. I honestly thought I'd be down first because I was going to be like, oh boy. Oh, oh there's a fail. Boy. Is that three? Yeah. All right, Red Streak it's has fallen. Go. As he gasps his last breath, the potions he didn't share fall out of his pocket and roll <laughs> on the ground. So, Red Streak, <laughs> how do you begin your journey to the City of Judgment? Describe your death. Uh, like, is he, like, as a spirit now or something? It could be. Uh, so just give me, like, when we kill monsters, I want you to describe your last moments as your spirit then begins the journey to the afterlife. Uh, so yeah, he, he gasps his last breath and his potions fall out of his pocket and his spirit comes out of his body. He's like, dang it, dang it, no! This was supposed to be an easy mission as he's getting pulled towards where he <laughs> needs to go. All righty. It is the dragon's turn again. Uh, let's see if we get another breath weapon here. Oh, we I do. Oh. <laughs> All right. The dragon's going to land right here and shift over a little bit to preserve try to preserve the last remaining cultist it has and do a breath weapon roll low roll low roll low still 44 and it uh, is going to hit aim at birdhouse so birdhouse you're going to take an automatic death uh, death save or fail via failure okay crom you successfully so 22 cold damage half damage from the 44 Oh, uh, Birdhouse is dead then, because that's two. Oh, two yes, automatic, that's right. right. So two failed death saves from that. And so Krom is still up. Earlier. So Birdhouse, how do you begin your journey to the City of Judgment? After the ice shards fell on him, the, you see wires and wood bits just kind of <laughs> sparking as they're trying to remain live, as lights are just slowly starting to flicker on and off and... Eventually, all the lights fade out, and you hear as Birdhouse just goes completely <laughs> limp. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. Okay, very nice. B1RD, make that roll. This is it. A 
Hey, <gasps> you are stable but still unconscious. So three, uh, you so you still get to hang out there. So we'll see what happens. Um, but you're unconscious, but you're not dead. It now that goes to our lair action. All right, this time the dragon is going to uh, cast freezing fog right here. So, Krom, make a con save, which you do. Oh my god. Krom's not going to go down. Four cold damage. <sighs> He's just like, his his beard is like covered in frost and ice. His 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 mohawk is like frozen stiff. All right, the Ooh, archer is cold. going to shoot right there next to you. And we'll do it. it uh, is Would it be normally with advantage still? It, it, it's going to be straight because disadvantage because she's right next to me. Advantage because of reckless. Okay. Straight. All right. Straight rolls. Ten, and a crit. Ooh. Why are you critting on me, man? Man, nineteen <laughs> damage from that arrow. Are you still up? Let me let me see. Oh, yes! you are still I'm up. I'm still up. You just you literally you shoot me like through the neck, and I'm like. <clears throat> Amazing. All right, Krom, your turn. You are in a fog cloud. Okay. Can I see the cultist outside? You knew she was there. Um, and so if you if you move a little bit, you would bump into her. Okay. Um, I'm going out. I'm going all out. Okay. Kayum <gasps> Thane! As, demo- as I try to demolish this cultist. 24. 24 that hit. will hit, well, and that will end her. Yeah, yeah, just completely knocking her like against the wall, and she just breaks apart by the limbs. And now, seeing, remembering last of where that dragon was, I am going to down my last potion. Okay. (laughs) Doesn't help at all. And I'm just gonna start moving. So five, ten. So hold yeah, on real quick. It. We're actually doing rules as written. Downing a potion is an action. Oh, we were? Okay, that's what I was asking. Crap. Oh, I thought you were talking about the uh, formula. We talked about that. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I'm forgetting a lot. Of stuff. Yeah. So, so I, I won't retcon yeah. that first one you did. So okay. just take away that nine unless, uh, yeah, because you already swung. We're yeah, doing no this worries. raw, Sam. Okay, so that's nine. Um, I am going to move closer, though, to the dragon. Okay. Uh, I'll get you right down here. Yeah, and All as right. I see him, I am just gonna recklessly, <laughs> recklessly, Kayamu, and just hurl my maul at him in like one final okay. ditch effort to do something. Hey, that's a hit. Thirteen points of force damage. All right, is your as maul? As he just cracks him across the jaw. And as the mole comes back, I just rest the head down on the ground as I'm kind of like supporting myself, <sighs> breathing out, just like, like my body is like radiating like steam from like just the heat of the rage, and I'm just breathing heavily, like the giant puffs of air coming out. Oh my and god! And at the beginning of the dragon's turn, you just hear. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like I'm eating well tonight, and I don't have to go hunting the cows. And the cold breath recharges. <laughs> Ooh, for 50 damage. So that's going to be well, 25 if you make well, this I save. I gotta let you know I have six health. <laughs> okay. Now. We'll make your save. Because uh, what's... <laughs> Your total What's health the, is like, 75? Like, okay, so you can't outright yeah. die. So either so either way, I... Um, yeah. I just, as the cold... Yeah, as um, as the cold comes in, I just say under my breath, As I kind of like hold the mole in front of me, place my hands, and just look down as I let the cold breath just consume my body and freeze me where I stand. I'll still do death saves, but I just want to have that yeah. awesome heroic pose. Well, at this point, the, the in the interest of time, uh, B1RD, 
the dragon comes over and finishes you and begins eating. How do you begin your journey to the City of Judgment? I was thinking that I should mention to the dragon that now that he's got the dwarf, as I promised him... You are unconscious eat. and unable to talk. So what happens as your consciousness and your soul or whatever is in you leaves to the next adventure? The lights start to flicker in his eyes and he says, but, but I'm eternal. Ooh. And the lights go out. Oh. All right, Krom. The dragon uses its lair action to send three ice spikes down into your body. Your soul begins to leave. How do you begin your journey to the City of Judgment? So in the same fashion of how my pose was, as the ice will come in and then at the point of impact, everything goes black. And in that same pose, I am back to my normal size with my maul as I am on a barge of sorts sailing across an endless ocean all black around me as I head and see City of Lights and flames and um, all types of music and joy coming from it as I go to join my ancestors of my clan in the next life. A smile creeping over my mouth as I am reunited with family once again. And that is our first TPK, gentlemen. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Yeah, no, like, and Crom's oh, boat man. sinks right before he gets to the city of light. <laughs> don't ruin my, don't ruin my fans, don't ruin it just because. All right, I'm your gonna. Out. Everyone that's watching, thank you very much for joining us on our first episode. Thank we hope guys. to see you for our after action report, where you uh, will discuss what went differently from what I planned, and uh, we'll get some reactions from these guys into what what their oh, thoughts were. Before yeah. we go, um, uh, unless you do this, and I don't, I'm gonna ask you next time. We'll we'll do it for the next episode. Um, at at the way we were playing, would we have won this fight? No, that was straight up. I, I Did, never got I, a chance to. Yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs>
I just lost another head of cattle last night. I'm aware of that, Soren. What would you have me do? Hire more amateurs and send them to their deaths? Nothing has changed. We can't sit around and let whatever is out there starve us to death. <sighs> I'll send word to Scornia Bell and request assistance from the Hellriders. Maybe they can do what the companions cannot. It's going to cost us, though. Pearl, come here, dear. A human female, ten years old, dressed in a simple brown tunic, steps forward. Yes, father? Fetch your mother for me, dear. It is becoming too dangerous. I'm going to send you ahead to Scornia Bell. I will join you in a few weeks after my duty here is finished and the harvest is complete. The road is dangerous. Don't leave the caravan, and don't forget your dagger. You remember those moves we've been practicing? I do. Will I see you at supper tonight before we leave? Of course, my dear. Now run along. He pats the thick brown hair on Pearl's head and gives her a warm smile. Pearl turns back and jogs out of the meeting hall and then runs home as fast as she can. Mother! Father says we're leaving tomorrow for Scornia Bell. I'm gonna go pack. Alone in her room, Pearl excitedly begins packing for her first trip to the big city. She stops and listens. Her mother had left in a huff. Mother? Sure of being alone, Pearl lifts up a baseboard in her bedroom and pulls out a small book with a faded cover and tattered pages and places it on her bed. In a small brass cup, she places some charcoal, insets, and herbs and hurriedly lights them on fire. She opens the book to the first page and after several attempts at an incantation, a small ferret with white fur and black eyes appears on the bed. Teak! I'm going to the big city. I want to bring you with me, but it's too risky to bring the book. I'll have to leave you here. Unless you think I should risk it. The weasel rolls over on the bed and stares up at Pearl with deep black eyes. You're right. I can't leave you alone. We're going to the big city. Once there, we can try and find someone that knows just what you are. Pearl scratches Teak's belly and opens the window, trying to waft out the smell of the burnt incense before looking at the book. And on the first try this time, Teak disappears. Pearl takes the small book and stuffs it in the bottom of her satchel and continues packing.